Sergeant Adams, please invite Ms. Sylvia Lim to the witness table. Sylvia, do take a seat for the record. Do please state your name, occupation, and the positions you hold. Uh, Chairman, my name is Sylvia Lim. Uh, I am a member of parliament for Janet GRC, and I'm also the chairperson of the Opposition Workers' Party. These are my main posts. Okay, thank you. The evidence you'll be giving today before the committee will be taken on oath. If you so desire, you can also take an affirmation. Clerk, please, and Minister. I, Sylvia Lim, swear that the evidence that I shall give before this committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Please be seated. Ms. Lim, the Committee of Privileges is looking into the complaint made by the Leader of the House, Ms. Indrani Raja, against former member of Sengkang GRC, Ms. Reza Khan, for a breach of privilege. Thank you for attending today's hearing to give evidence before the committee and to answer the questions which members of the committee would like to put to you. Uh, you do have a solemn obligation to answer our questions truthfully if you refuse to answer our questions directly or attempt to mislead the committee. Such behaviour will be an offence and in contempt of this committee. I would like now to call upon uh, Minister Edwin Tong for his questions. Good afternoon, Ms. Lim. Afternoon, Mr. Tong. Ms. Lim, thank you very much for being here to assist the COP. Uh, in the course of this afternoon, I'll be asking you questions. And um, if there are any documents which we think might be relevant, I will also be asking you to produce them, subject to the Chairman's uh, confirmation. So there's a piece of paper and some materials on your side. If I, if, I'd be grateful if you could please take a note of uh, the documents as and when we discuss them and I ask you to produce them. Is that okay? I'll take note of them, yes. All right. Now, if there's anyone else who might be able to corroborate what you say in the course of giving the evidence, please also let us know. Yes. Right. Now, Ms. Lim, let's start with uh, 8th of August. I understand that that was the first time on which you became aware that Ms. Khan had lied in Parliament on the 3rd of August. Would that be correct? On the 8th of August, that was uh, the time when she, Ms. Khan, told... Oh. Um, Pritam Singh, Faisal Manap and myself that what she had said on 3rd August was not true. Yes, and my question was, was that the first time you became aware? That was the first time that she, she told us, yeah. First time that you became aware, Ms Lim? Yes, that was the first time I became aware. Yes, thank you. Uh, how did you become aware? Was it at Mr Singh's home? Or were you aware of it prior to arriving at Mr. Singh's home? I was aware of it after I arrived at Mr. Singh's home. Were you aware of it before Ms. Khan told it to you? Um, if I recall correctly, what had happened was that um, the night before, um, Pritam contacted me to ask me whether I could uh, come for a meeting at his home. So I said, the next day, so I said, fine, and then we arranged the time. Uh, and uh, upon arriving uh, at his home the next day, which was at the 8th, uh, he, I think that was prior to uh, Ms. Khan and Mr. Faisal arriving at the home, because I came a bit earlier. Yes. And uh, he had mentioned, he mentioned to me then that he had had a conversation on the telephone with Ms. Khan the night before, and that he had um, been querying her on the anecdote that she had shared uh, on the 3rd of uh, August. And uh, he, f he didn't find her answer satisfactory. So he told me that he, he, he put uh, a blunt question to her, something along the lines of, um, just tell me, this, did this thing even happen or not? Mm -hmm. and, and he said that she had said that, no, it, it didn't happen. And he told me that he was angry, and uh, I think he slammed down the phone. So um, 
he narrated this to me when I was at his home on the 8th. So just to be clear, this was told to you on the 8th at his, at his home, but he was narrating a conversation he had with Ms Khan the, the day before, correct? The day before, yes, correct. Right, thank you. Um, can you describe to us what happened thereafter from the time Ms Khan arrived? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, perhaps it's too open-ended uh, it's a, It was a meeting that I think started at 11 a.m., if I'm not wrong. About that time, yes. So the meeting lasted for about an hour or just past an hour. Something was, like that, I yeah. understand. Okay. And uh, just to frame the issue, I believe that the meeting was initially called to discuss a clarificatory statement in relation to a speech that Ms. Khan had made on the 3rd of August on polygamy marriages, polygamous marriages, as well as female genital cutting. That was what Mr. Faisal told us. I, I can't remember what I myself knew about the purpose of this meeting because I was only asked to come um, the night before, you right. know. So, uh, but uh, I think in the course of the uh, communication between me and Pritam, uh, I can't remember whether it was on the, on the 7th or on the 8th, mm -hmm. uh, I knew that Faisal as well as Raisa would be there. Uh, and at that time, of course, um, after the 3rd August uh, debate, uh, on the women's motion that was filed by our party, uh, we do understand that there was some um, reaction from the Muslim uh, community about certain topics that she had raised. So I didn't think too much about it, but I assumed that it, it was related to that, yes. Okay. So the reaction that you spoke about were some questions from several quarters questioning the veracity of what Ms Khan had spoken about on the 3rd of August, is that right? No, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean exactly by that, but... Uh, Can you describe what you mean by reaction then? Oh, that was actually a um, reaction from the Muslim community about those issues that were raised. I believe there was polygamy and female genital cutting. Um, from what I understood, because I wasn't personally monitoring that feedback, but from what I understood, um, it did not go down well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was in relation to that. Okay. And... Uh, the purpose of meeting was to discuss, uh, I guess, further follow-up or a response to what didn't go down well. Is that right? Uh, I assume so, but like I said, you know, prior to coming for the meeting, I, I was not aware of this other issue that that this development, you know, regarding the, um, the anecdote that she shared about going to the police station. No, I understand. I, I mean, I'm focused on what you uh, had understood going into the meeting, which was. Uh, that Ms Khan and Mr Faisal would be there. You said that earlier, right? Yeah, that's right. I knew that. So, so as far as that was concerned, before you had a conversation with Mr Singh at his home on the 8th of August itself, your understanding was that the issue was to be discussed at his home was one that pertains to Ms Khan's speech concerning polygamous marriages as well as female genital cutting. Is that right? Well, uh, prior to, to arriving at his house, I knew that... Uh, Faisal and Raisa would be there. Mm -hmm. So it's a logical assumption that I would have that is related to that issue. Okay. No, I, I'm, I'm asking because I wanted to be clear that prior to arriving at his house, you had no inkling that another issue that would be raised would be Ms Khan's admission that she had spoken a lie in Parliament on the 3rd of August. Would that be right? Uh, yes, I didn't know that this would come up before I arrived at um, Pratam's house. Okay. Now, so when Ms Khan arrived, can you walk us through what happened in gist? And then if you feel that if you feel that there are specifics to go into, we'll come back to it again. So give us a gist of what happened when Ms Khan arrived and how the meeting proceeded. Okay, um, I'll try to recollect the best as I can. Yes, of course. Um, I can't remember whether she arrived first or Faisal arrived first, but I was definitely the first to arrive, and that's why Pritam shared with me that this other conversation had happened the night before. So when um, Faisal and Raisal, I mean, basically everybody had arrived, um, I think Pritam uh, started the meeting or the discussion by, by asking Raisa whether she had something to tell us. And... Um, Raisa started to get quite uh, emotional. Uh, and um, so, you know, after, I guess, a few seconds of hesitation, I can't remember exactly, but she became quite tearful and uh, started to say that um, what she had shared in Parliament uh, on the 3rd of August regarding going with the crime victim to the police station 
was not true, but it was an anecdote that she had heard in a survivor's group. And, um, and then she started saying that almost in the same breath that, you know, she was a victim of a rape uh, when she was 18. And she was getting all, you know, uh, distraught and, and saying that she had not gotten over the trauma and so on. So so that was what started off the, the conversation on this topic. That was how it started. Can you uh, tell us to the best of your recollection uh, the recount by Ms. Khan on this? Perhaps before that, I think just for Ms. Sylvia Lim, I think this uh, issue had cropped up before. Uh, we've decided that perhaps we'll use the term sexual assault. For that. Fine, yeah, yeah but right you know, you. because she did say that. <laughs> so so we, we know that for our own yeah. uh, internal understanding, but I think more for the purposes of uh, when this goes out, I think we want to redact it accordingly. I'm fine. I mean, so long as, you know, you don't think I'm okay. recording no, no. inaccurately no, what she all. told not us. And it also, I mean, when, when we use the word it also makes it very clear um, the seriousness of the sexual assault. So Indeed in that so. sense, there is some relevance in the Indeed words so. used. Yeah, so. Something we've German, deliberated yeah. and we thought that perhaps uh, we will keep to that term. But we are fully cognizant that that was exactly the term used, yes. and which is why you respond accordingly. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sure. Mr. Ma, I also want to assure you that we have notes of what was said, and I think uh, Mr. Singh had and Mr. Faisal had put it in the same terms as you have. Uh, and we know the point you're making, the severity of the account that Ms. Khan made to you when she saw you, and uh, you can be assured that that's something we will take into account. Not only the words she used, but the impact it has on the three of you at that meeting. So you can be assured of that. Thank you. So, uh, am I to continue? <laughs> I've, I've forgotten what I had asked you, or maybe you have forgotten what... I, asked you, I, I think know. I think the question was okay, whether I can recount uh, in detail uh, uh, what she narrated to us, yes. something along those lines. I think you had started off the account, and then uh, I think Mr. Chairman then interjected to speak about the term. So yes. Perhaps you can continue. All right. So uh, as I said, she uh, was distraught. She was crying. She said that she had been a victim of sexual assault uh, when she was eighteen, uh, when she was overseas, and. Um, she didn't have the courage to report it. Uh, and then, um, so we, we started to get quite concerned about her emotional state. Uh, I recall that um, Pritam asked her, you know, who, who else knows about this past incident involving herself? Uh, and she mentioned that uh, her therapist knew um, her husband knew, and also Paying, Low Paying, and Yudish Nathan also knew about this. Uh, and then the question was asked, I think, by Pritam Moso, how about your parents? And then she said her parents didn't know about this past incident. Uh, then, of course, Faisal, I suppose, being professionally a trained counsellor, he started to observe that um, she didn't seem emotionally stable. So the questions from him were more about you know, um, whether she had sought any professional help to, you know, process what had happened to her, to help her to overcome the trauma and so on. And, and the answer we got from her really was that she didn't really um, seek any significant uh, professional help. So uh, it appeared that she was still traumatized by, by the incident. So the, the conversation on, uh, at that meeting was centering around these, these themes, I would say. Now, in relation to her admission that she had spoken a lie in Parliament, now, of course, this is the second time you heard it because Mr. Singh gave you an account of it earlier that Just morning. Just a few minutes right? prior, yes. What was your reaction? My reaction was that uh, this is something that needs to be corrected. Uh, but, of course, how and when I didn't uh, apply my mind strictly to it at that time because... Uh, when she came and told us all these things, you know, we were a bit overwhelmed by her well-being and trying to see um, how she could, in a sense, stabilise herself and sort out her personal matters um, before taking the next step, in that sense, to, to correct the record. Okay. 
Mr. Faisal also told us that he was overwhelmed as well. Would you say that that was that's a fair description, what you just said, a fair description of how the three of you, Mr. Singh, Mr. Faisal and yourself, reacted to her admission? I think our first instinct was that because, you know, she was in such a fragile condition that uh, we certainly wanted to show her as much understanding as possible because, after all, I mean, perhaps apart from Faisal, who has some professional training, Pritam and myself, we are not trained to assess or or, or deal with, you know, um, victims of sexual crime. So we decided that it was best for, for us to give her some encouragement and, and emotional support um, and focus on stabilising herself first, you know, before talking about the, the other issue which had to come, you know, which was about how to correct the parliamentary record. Mr Singh told us that when he was aware that she was consulting a therapist, he was relieved or assured because she was getting professional help. Did that also strike you? She did say that she had a therapist, but uh, I... And, and in that sense, yes, you know, at least she wasn't alone. But, okay. of course, we were not aware of um, the intensity of the therapy or what was being done, okay. but that she had someone, you know, that she had consulted, but we didn't know the frequency or whatever. All right. But coming back to the admission of the lie... Ms. Slim, you're an experienced politician. You would have immediately appreciated that this was a serious matter that had to be addressed, correct? Yes, it was. It's a question of time, as you have put it. When's the appropriate time, right? Yes, that was my consideration, right? Okay. Now, you have told us what you thought or your reaction to what she told you and Mr. Singh and Mr. Faisal about the lie. Now, tell us what then did you say to Ms Khan about this admission of the lie in Parliament? On the 8th of August? On the 8th of August. Uh, I don't recall saying anything to her about that specifically because I didn't um, feel at that moment that it was appropriate for me to uh, add to the emotional pressure that she seemed to be facing. So I decided to... Uh, not address that issue on the 8th of August. I, I did not say anything to her about it. So you didn't ask her a question? You didn't give her any guidance as to what to do? Nor did you talk about the next steps concerning the lie in Parliament? Would that be right? We were mainly focusing on stabilising her as, as we saw her. Uh, so our questions were more about um, for her to square the circle with her family for um, her to get um, professional help, but I did not talk to her about um, the next steps about correcting the record, yes. So the answer to my question would be no. Those steps were not taken. and those I did not say anything on the 8th of August about this. Okay. I'd like to show you parts of Mr Singh and Mr Faisal's evidence of the same meeting and sure. just ask you some questions from sure. them. Now, beginning with Mr Faisal, if you could have a... There's a bundle of... Uh, edited transcripts. Yes. So if you could... This is Mr Faisal's evidence. He gave it on the 9th of December. If I could please ask you to look at uh, page 109 of this bundle. S sorry, Clark, it's the edited one. Yeah. Do you have that? One zero nine, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, about one third down from the page, you'll see I had asked Mr. Faisal, okay, I'm referring to your reaction. Do you see that? Ms. Lim, do you see that? No. No. Um, one third down. <coughs> Sorry. Um... Hang on, can I just check with the clerk that we are on the same page, literally? Come, I will have a look. Different, eh? <laughs> Okay, now you have it. 
One third down. Uh, okay, I'm referring to your reaction. Yes, I have it. Yes. Yeah. So I was asking him about the same occasion on the 8th of August, and I asked him too about his reaction. Mm. And he said, as I mentioned, I was shocked because I was overwhelmed by the first statement that she made. Then I said, let me be clear, okay? I have heard in detail your evidence earlier, and I don't need to revisit that. I'm focused on whether you or Ms. Lim or Mr. Singh had any reaction to her admission that she lied in Parliament just a few days before mm. that. As I mentioned just now, we were overwhelmed by the first statement. As I mentioned, as human being, can I be overwhelmed by certain things? And suddenly I changed to be, become like startled. Why are you lying? Then I said, no, I mean, and he says, no, because certainly there's a change of reaction. Mr. Faisal, perhaps I put it this way, we all have a range of emotions, correct? But we also have responsibilities, indeed. Now, and then over the page, we, he continued to give us evidence as to how he felt overwhelmed by it. And uh, you can quickly cast your eye over the next few lines. Where? Uh, sorry. Okay. Where, where, where are you referring to? I'm Mr. over at 110. Yeah. So there's a part, portion just before the mid midpoint of the page where he talks about the sequence when Raisha mentioned a sexual assault and mm. we were overwhelmed. And he talks about his concern but also concern about the lie, but also his concern for her. Yes. And then at, uh, I'm sorry, there's no line reference, but about one third from the bottom of the page, I asked him, were you so overwhelmed that you could not say anything at all to the admission that she had lied? And he says, this is the truth I'm telling you. Now, can I ask you to turn to page 114? Yes. And I asked him at the bottom of the page, you told us very clearly that throughout the time at the meeting, after she uttered those words, none of you discussed it. And so there was where is it? one, one, four, three questions from the bottom. Do you have it? Mr. Faisal was answering my question. I said, hang on. Do you see that? Do you see hang those words? On. Oh, yes, okay. Okay. On, yeah. So I said, hang on, you told us very clearly that throughout the time at the meeting after she uttered those words, none of you discussed it and there was, and then he says, yes, zero discussion on it, correct? He says, correct. Do I characterize your evidence correctly? Correct. Zero evidence on it, not a word was spoken about it by any of you. And he says, yes, that I recall. Not a question was asked at all. Yes, not asked to her. Amongst herself, no. And basically, his point was that there was zero engagement on this issue with her and by the three of you. Would that also fit with your own recollection of the meeting? What I recollected, uh, yes, is in accordance with what Mr. Faisal described, that uh, we were more focused on her um, emotional uh, well-being and also that she needed to square the matter with her parents before anything else could be done. So we did not... Uh, speak on what were the next steps because, I mean, for me at least, I thought that the pressure uh, at that point in time would have been perhaps too much for her. That, that was my speaking for myself. I mean, okay, I understand. I mean, th you, you are describing to us what were on, what were the considerations on your mind. Yes, but these were not articulated to her. Yes, correct. Not articulated. Okay. Now, could I please ask you to pick up Mr. Singh's evidence, and this time it is the unedited one, the raw ones, because I didn't have time to make reference to the edited versions that just came. So this is the raw version, Ms. Lim. Sure. Yes. Um, now, this is Mr. Singh's evidence on the 10th of December. If I could please ask you to go to page 296. 296. You'll see the page numbers appear at various junctures yes, throughout yes. the page. Yeah. Uh, does it start with, but I'm not sure, also not sure whether I shared it with Ms. Yeah, Lim. Okay, correct. Right. You're right. Okay. okay. So if you go to line 14, this one, there's line Mr. Tong. numbers, right. so it's easier to focus. So line 14, I asked him, can you give us an account of this meeting in summary, beginning from the time when Ms. Khan arrived, and so on. So I'm just giving you the reference point to when he started giving the evidence. And Mr. Singh then proceeds to talk about the meeting. If I could invite you to turn over the next page to 297. And somewhere about line 10. It's the same page, right? 
uh, it's 297, but line okay, 10. Yes. Yeah, it, it runs over the next page physically. She says, it was very traumatic for her, line 9 and 10. And because it was very traumatic for her, she told an untruth in Parliament because she feels strongly about, you know, issues of sexual assault. And arising from there, she, she, did, she did what she did in Parliament. That was the gist. She goes on to say that actually that part of the meeting wasn't very long. At page 298, line 1, and the conversation actually was very short. Do you have that, Ms Lim? Uh, are you still you, at 297? Yes, I'm at the bottom of 297, but moving on to the start of 298. Oh, okay, yes. Right. Yes, S still part of Mr. Singh's testimony. Conversation actually was very short. And if I could invite you to, to look at the start of page 299. Yes. She says my, he says, my guidance to her was to speak to your parents about it because in my mind, this would have to be corrected in Parliament, but before we can even... And I said, did you tell her that? Sorry, did you tell her that? No, not on that day, not on that day. Why not? I think at that point, given her condition, given her state, it was more important for me to tell her that, look, speak to your parents. And when she left, I did tell her we'll have to speak to this issue, but tell your parents first. I told her that. Do you recall this part of the conversation that Mr. Singh had with Ms. Khan? About uh, 299, is it? Uh, yes, what I've just read back to you. Because um, it's quite a long... Uh, it started at 296, right? Yes, so it did. Am yeah, I supposed I, to confirm the give whole... <laughs> No, I'm going to give you the context of the conversation, but the only parts which Mr. Singh said he spoke directly to her appears at the quotes in 299. Okay. But rather than just show you 299, I wanted to give you the context to which this statement was said. But as far as Mr. Singh's evidence is concerned, those, were the, those parts in quotes at 299 were the words he spoke to her. So my question to you is, do you recall Mr. Singh speaking these words to Ms. Khan? And were you there? I recall uh, him saying that she had to speak to her parents. That I recall. That I recall. That you recall? Yes. The rest of page Which 299. Which part exactly is it that you're asking? Look at the start of 299. Okay. My guidance was speak to your parents about mm -hmm. it because in my mind, I read that to you earlier. And then yes. o over the page at line 10, I think at that point, given her condition, it was more important for me to tell her that Look, speak to your parents. Then he says, and when she left, so I assume this is a different occasion, I did tell her, in quotes again, we'll have to speak to this issue, but tell your parents first. I told her that. Um, and when she left, the part where he says, and when she left, what he told her, that I don't think I was there. Okay. So you would have been there and heard him say, speak to your parents first. Yes. But you weren't there when, as she was leaving and those words were said. I, I didn't accompany her out, so I, I don't think I heard what um, he may have said to her okay. at that point. Okay. Did Mr. Singh, or well, we heard what Mr. Faisal said. There was zero evidence, zero statements and discussions. Did Mr. Singh say anything else to Ms. Khan on this issue, on the lie? I think the main thing was that she had to speak to her parents. That, that's what I recall, yeah. And I understood it to be, in a sense, a, a first necessary step before anything else could be done. That's what I understood. Okay, I understand. And to the best of your knowledge, nothing else was said by Mr. Singh? I, I, like I said, I wasn't um, with... Him and Miss Khan throughout, know, you know, so to I... To the best of your knowledge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Nothing it was else. basically about telling her parents, about making sure that she um, gets therapy to stabilise herself. You know, th that was the main uh, concern of that, that uh, 8 August discussion on, on this topic. Okay, so your, your takeaway from all of these, when I say all of these, I mean the discussion on the lie on the 8th of August would be that it's important to clarify this in Parliament, but in your words, a necessary step would be for her to speak to her family first, correct? That's how I understood it, yes. And that's your main takeaway 
from the 8th of August meeting concerning the lie. Would that be right? Main takeaway, I suppose so, yes. Yes, okay. Now, Mr Faisal told us that the meeting then proceeded to discuss the statement that she was asked to put up um, okay, concerning, so concerning uh, clarifications on uh, the speech that she made a few days ago. So, you know, the part that you just referred me to at 299, uh, and when she left, that of course took place when she, when she was leaving, I, yes, I presume yes. so. so. So now you're coming back again yes, to, I'm, the, I'm, yeah, back to the media. Yeah. I'm coming back because I wanted to look at it from the angle of the issue of there being two separate issues being discussed. Yeah. One was the lie and the other one was the statement. So I wanted to follow through on the point of the lie and I think we have done that. So now I'm going back to the part of the meeting where you were discussing the clarificatory statement that she was to make on her speech. Uh, regarding polygamy and uh, FGC, I think. Right, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So can you give us a gist of what was discussed, how you had left off, and what conclusions were drawn from the meeting on what steps to take? I mean, my impression personally was that I was probably coming into that discussion on the um, reaction of the Muslim community to, to polygamy and FGC, uh, I, that I was probably coming in a bit late into that discussion. My impression was that I think Faisal had been engaging Raisa, that was my understanding, on this issue prior to going to Pritam's house. So I wasn't part of that um, initial um, uh, background to it. So when this topic came up uh, at the house, uh, it appeared that you know, they had already uh, sort of reached a, a point where uh, they could uh, more or less agree on on what needed to be addressed. And and from what I understood, I mean, from what I recall, um, there was some discussion about the the points raised and uh, what what she wanted to say to explain uh, about her speech. Uh, so, so there was uh, some discussion on that, but but um, it was a bit detailed for me because, like I said, I was coming late into that discussion and I don't really understand those issues very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the final, uh, I suppose, uh, point of conclusion of that was that she would leave the meeting on the 8th of August to draft a statement and then... Um, you know, she would run the statement by us, or at least uh, by a few of us, and then if, if the statement was deemed to be uh, appropriate, then she would post it on Facebook. Okay. So if I may summarise it, the issues concerning FGC and polygamy had, prior to 8th August, already been discussed between Mr Faisal and Ms, Ms Khan. I believe so. Right. And, I, and I think Pritam was also aware of it, yeah. Okay. yeah. But I myself wasn't involved in that. Okay. Uh, yes. And at the meeting, I assume the meeting would have discussed the kind of content that the statement should contain in clarifying. Uh, would that it, be right? It, it would be because it has to be relevant to what would be posted up, yeah. Correct, because the purpose of the meeting was really to put out a clarificatory statement in light of the adverse reactions, correct? Uh, I I, won't, I don't know whether you call it a clarificatory statement, but perhaps a further explanation. explanation. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. All right, I understand. And the upshot of the meeting was that Ms. Khan would leave the meeting, go back, discuss, uh, sorry, put up a draft, discuss it further, and then eventually put it up. Yes. Right. Which, to your recollection, happened, correct? I believe so. Okay. Were you privy to the discussions on the draft? I believe that the final draft was sent to me, uh, and I didn't have any issue with it myself, so I didn't uh, object to it, and I was okay with it, yeah. Okay. In your view, did the draft that was prepared by Ms. Khan that was sent to you uh, comport with the, uh, the matters discussed at the meeting? In other words, did it reflect what you discussed at the meeting? You mean on the FGC and polygamy? Right. It was on those topics from what I rem remember, yes. But she would have taken on board the comments, discussions made at the 8th of August meeting in preparing the draft, I assume. I think the whole... Um how shall I say, the tenor of that discussion was more, um, it was not an instruction-giving session, let's put it that way, all right? Because uh, these were issues that she wanted to raise because she felt strongly about them. Mm -hmm. And um, and certainly, I don't think it was the intention of Faisal or Pritam or anyone to force her to say anything in the post or explanatory post that she was not comfortable with. So, so the the... 
general understanding was that she had to own those things that she was explaining, but you know, um, the role, I guess, of Faisal and, and us is just to 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 see that is you know, I guess, worded appropriately. You know. Yeah. Yes, I I understand. I mean, she will have she made the speech and she will be making the post, so she's got to own it from that perspective. Right. I think that's what you're saying. Uh, but at the meeting, did she display any reluctance to put up a post, or did she appear to take on board the points that yourself and Mr. Faisal and Mr. Singh were making to her? I, my reading is that she um, agreed that uh, there would need to be some follow-up from her side uh, to address some of the concerns that had been raised about her initial speech on these topics. Okay. And was she receptive to and understand the points that Mr. Faisal were making? at the meeting? Um, I didn't sense that she was resistant. I mean, she, she, she listened and was processing it, you know, yeah. Okay. And eventually when you saw a draft of the post at some stage before it was posted, you were quite happy with it. I didn't see an issue with it because, uh, I can't recall distinctly now, but, but my sense was that it, it generally was in line with the conversation. Okay, all right, thank you. Now, um, after Ms. Khan left the meeting, and I understand from Mr. Singh that she left first. I can't remember, but uh, it, it may have been. Okay. He, he told us that he walked her to the door and she left first, and that yourself and Mr. Faisal left probably shortly thereafter. Was that your recollection? Likely, I suppose. Was there any conversation amongst the three of you without Ms. Khan present concerning the lie in Parliament? I don't think there was. No? Okay. Yeah, so we were kind of, um, I suppose, in a bit of a shock. And uh, our, I mean, we knew the situation was serious in that sense, but at the same time, uh, needed careful handling. I understand. Yeah, I, I, so I'm not going into what you thought now. I just want to know whether anything was said and discussed amongst the three of you. I don't think so. I'm asking this because I understand why it may not have been raised with Ms. Khan mm. at the meeting, given the evidence that we have heard from yourself, Mr. Faisal and Mr. Singh, given her emotional state. But now she has left. And the three of you are the senior leaders of the Workers' Party. Right. You've just heard an admission by one of, your, one of your party MPs that a lie has been said in Parliament. I think all three of you and you this morning, have, this afternoon, have told us that that's a serious matter that has to be corrected. So now she has left the meeting. Question is, would you not have wanted to discuss with your fellow colleagues what next steps should be taken, at least from your perspective? I mean, I knew uh, in my mind that the next steps would have to come. But at that point in time, you know, um, we, we didn't talk about the next steps. Okay, so... Nothing was discussed amongst the three of you, and these thoughts that you've just explained were unarticulated. Correct? I don't think I said anything about it at the time, yes. Okay. And to be clear, neither did Mr. Faisal nor Mr. or Mr. Singh. I, I don't recall that being discussed. Okay, I, and I'm still on the 8th of August. Sure. Meeting. Okay. Now, at any stage thereafter, and I'm now focused on the broader period for the rest of August, whether or not this issue had come up between yourself and Ms. Khan, first of all. Did you talk to her about it? Did you ask her, has she spoken to her family? Has she decided on how to clarify the lie? Did you discuss this with her? I did not speak to Ms. Khan myself, as far as I recall. And um, the reason for that is that uh, I left the matter, really, to pretend to follow up. And I'll, I'd like to explain why. Okay. Uh, first, I, I'll let you explain why, but yeah. can I, I just understand uh, your evidence? So to be clear, you did not speak to Ms. Khan or communicate with her on the lie at all for the rest of August? I did not do that, yes. Okay. Would that be the same for the rest of September as well? Um, I think in September also I did not talk to her okay. because I found, um, or rather, um, she had come down with shingles in September and then... I think she got leave of speaker not to attend the parliamentary sitting. So my own assumption was that uh, it could have been stress-induced. So I decided that um, 
I would just, you know, wait for a while. So for the rest of August and September, you did not discuss with Ms Khan the question of the lie in Parliament, correct? I did not, yes. Did you send her any text messages or email messages, any other communication in writing About over, this, this? over this issue? I don't think I did, yes. Okay, now you were going to explain to us why you left it to Mr Singh to yes. deal with the matter. Can you please yes. do that? Yes, I mean, uh, basically, uh, I, I left it to pretend to follow up with her because uh, he knows her best. And um, historically, I mean, she was helping him in his Meet People session uh, in UNOS, I think, for about a year prior to the GE. Um, and um, I think he had some communications on and off with um, her family and so on. So... Um, even throughout uh, her stint as a parliamentarian, I think uh, he was the one that basically was um, guiding her and um, and she would go to him with questions and so on. So he was the one that I think was closest in that sense and knew her best. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, I was concerned that um, if she was uh, pressured in that sense by... Um, things she couldn't handle because of her emotional condition, then uh, it, it, it might not be the best thing. We don't know what reaction she would um, have. So I decided that uh, I would let leave it to Pritam to follow up on the matter with her um, for these reasons. Okay, so those are the reasons why you left it entirely to Pritam to follow up with Ms Khan, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, going back to my previous time frame, for the rest of August and September, did you have a discussion with Mr. Singh or with Mr. Faisal on the lie that Ms. Khan spoke in Parliament? I don't think I spoke with Faisal. For Pritam, I also can't uh, distinctly remember. Uh, I may have asked him certain questions about how Raisa was, but I don't think that I spoke about the issue of the lie. So l let me understand it quite carefully. Did you discuss with either of them what steps would be taken to clarify the lie in Parliament? I did not discuss with them, I don't think, from August to September. On this issue at all? I can't recall, I don't think so. What about any discussion on when that might happen? For example, you were aware of the lie on the 8th of August. Right. The next sitting was on the 13th of September, about five weeks away. Did you, prior to that, discuss with Mr Singh or Mr Faisal as to whether the lie would be clarified in Parliament in September? I did not discuss it with them. No. Did you have a sense as to what Mr Singh's time frame would be? Did you discuss that with him? Uh, I did not discuss any specific time frame with him, but what I did note, of course, was that uh, on the f uh, prior to the October sitting, uh, on the 1st of October, uh, he had sent an email to all the MPs in WP um, reminding everyone, I would say, all right, of the standards expected uh, in Parliament and, and that if uh, anything that was said in Parliament could not be substantiated, then uh, the MP would face uh, being hauled up before the Committee of Privileges. So I do not know whether the committee has seen this email because I brought it along. We have it. Uh, Mr. Singh helpfully gave us a copy okay, over sure. the weekend. All right. Uh, but this email uh, was not addressed to the question of the lie by Ms. Khan specifically, correct? To me, I mean, uh, it was a big nudge to her. That's how I read it. But, but if you look at the words, uh, it's just to the team. Yes. Yes. It's to all the Workers' Party MPs. That's right. And there's no express reference to Ms Khan's lie in Parliament, correct? No express reference. And the only persons on that email chain who were aware that it was a lie would be yourself, Mr Singh, Mr Faisal and Ms Khan herself, correct? Yes, and I read this myself um, as basically uh, that Pritam had his eye on the matter and that's why he sent this email you know, he probably assessed that uh, this was an appropriate way to move the issue forward with Ms Khan, uh, and that was why it was sent. So I was actually comforted to see the email. Okay. Going back to my original sequence of questions, in this same period, throughout August and September, 
did you have occasion to speak to Ms Khan about whether her family were aware of the sexual assault? You mean whether she had informed them? Yes, that's right. I don't think I spoke to her about Whether that. she had informed them or whether through some other means they became aware. I don't think I asked her anything about that, yes. I asked you this question because earlier on you told us that your takeaway from the meeting on the 8th of August was that her family knowing would be a necessary step for clarification in Parliament. That's right. right. So one of the things that would need to be done is to ensure that her family became aware of the sexual assault became, before it became public, correct? And as I mentioned earlier as well, um, I had my reasons for, for leaving the matter to Pritam to follow up on, so I did not myself um, speak to her on these matters uh, to confirm whether what had been done or not done. Okay. But your understanding from the 8th of August meeting was that the family being aware of it would be a necessary step or a precondition to the matter being ventilated in Parliament, correct? I believe that that uh, was the necessary and that was how she also um, perceived the issue because um, she mentioned that, you know, this the, her past experience was very integral to explain why she told that untruth in the first place. And um, because her parents didn't know, she would not be able to publicly come forward with it until her parents knew. So that was our understanding, yes. Okay, so you, you drew that understanding also from what she said? That's Yeah, okay. yes. All right. Now, this, early on you articulated various reasons on which you say led you to leave Mr. Singh to deal with Ms. Khan and had handle the problem. Yes. Right. Did Mr. Singh know that this is how you saw the problem and how you chose to leave it to him? I believe he would know because uh, that had been the way that um, <clears throat> he had been dealing with Ms. Khan for quite a while. Okay. You said you believe he would know. Do I take it that you did not articulate this to him? I did not articulate this to him, yes. But I believe he knew that that was my uh, thinking. Okay. Were there any messages, emails, anything on social media uh, messaging or any other form of written communication between yourself, Mr. Faisal and Mr. Singh concerning what the Workers' Party would do to clarify the lie spoken by Ms. Khan in Parliament on the 3rd of August? Was there anything you mean in uh, written communication? Yeah. Did you discuss by email with Mr. Singh and Mr. Faisal? Did you send any messages concerning what to do, when this would come up? Ha are the parents aware? Anything that concerns clarifying the I lie? Think, I think all our discussions um, were not uh, written in uh, emails or, or social media, as far as I know. Were there any... Uh, I mean, for example, would... Would you have discussed what Ms Khan would say if she were to clarify the matter in Parliament? Which time frame was that? I'm focused on August and September still. No, not yet, no. Not yet. Okay, you asked me which time frame because obviously in October, yes. in the lead up to the November sitting where she did clarify it, there were exchange of messages concerning what Ms Khan would say, right? Not exchange of messages, but in October... Um, there were some drafts that Ms Khan came up with mm -hmm. and then, you know, we provided our input uh, as necessary. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's what you refer to. Uh, yeah, because I just wanted to clarify the question. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I wanted to also understand what you were saying so that I'll come back to it because I'm not in the October time zone yet. Okay, sure. Okay. So if I understand your evidence correctly, you appreciated that the lie, lying in Parliament was a serious and grave matter. It had to be clarified in Parliament at some stage. All three of you were concerned with Ms Khan's, if I may just use a general term, emotional ability to cope with clarifying with, the, with Parliament at that stage. And more importantly, you were concerned that her family was not yet aware of the issue. And both yourself and Mr. Faisal left it to Mr. Singh to handle the problem. Would that be an accurate summary of what happened? 
I can't speak for Mr. Faisal though. Um, so he would have to. He have to. Uh, I mean, speak for himself on that matter. Yes. Okay. So first for yourself. Would that be yes, right? for myself, yes. I mean, uh, as I mentioned earlier, on the 8th of August, when this revelation was made to us that she had told this untruth in Parliament, um, her condition was such that um, she was very emotional. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, felt that at that point in time, it was important for us to show her some emotional support. Um, and she needed to stabilise herself, as well as, you know, square that... that past trauma with her family before any next steps could be made. Okay. So the answer to my question as to whether it's an accurate summary would be yes, to get along with the points that you just made. Yeah, yeah. I prefer to <laughs> summarise myself. Okay. All right. Sure. I don't want to put words in your mouth. So always be happy with what you say. Now, uh, you said you can't speak for Mr. Faisal, but certainly from your perspective as the chairman of the party, knowing that at least two other senior members of the Workers' Party were aware of what is a serious and grave issue which had to be dealt with. From your perspective, did you know or think that Mr. Faisal was actively dealing with the problem himself? Or did you know or think that Mr. Faisal was leaving it to Mr. Singh to deal with? I have to say that I'm not aware. I mean, I, I do not know uh, when, what Faisal did or did not do. So from your perspective, you left it to Mr. Singh? Yes, I did. But you did not know if Mr. Faisal similarly did so? Or if he actively spoke to Ms. Khan or dealt with Ms. Khan? Yeah, I'm not sure because it's entirely possible that he may have followed up with her on the therapy part, I mean, for example. So I, I don't think I want to speculate because I don't know for a fact. Okay, I understand. Throughout this period of time, we've heard your evidence that there was nothing exchanged between the three of you in writing. Right, concerning the so. case and so on, right? We heard that. Now, as far as you're aware, were there any other objective steps taken in August and September which would prepare and tend towards Ms Khan coming to Parliament to explain the lie and clarifying her position? Uh, for myself, I am not aware... Um, like you say, what was the question again? Any? Uh, hey, I'll, <laughs> sorry, I maybe I rephrase it. And again, I'm still in the uh, August Understand. and September time period. Okay. Throughout this time period, was there any objective steps? I mean, steps that we can look at now and point to, which were taken, which would be consistent with Miss Khan coming to Parliament to clarify the lie and explain the truth in Parliament? Uh, I'm not aware of uh, any, as you mentioned, um, what was the word you used? I said objective steps, but I think uh, you, well, I mean, that's the lawyer in me speaking, so you can say any steps, anything. Yeah, because, done. you know, as, as I mentioned, you know, the event happened in August. Uh, we got to know about the fact that she said that she told an untruth on the 8th. Uh, by the time September came, which is down with shingles. So um, I do not think that anything in that sense concrete was done. Okay. Uh, to, your, to the best of your knowledge, no such steps were taken? As far as I know. Okay. Now, um, throughout this period of time, again, August and September, there would have been occasion for you to have interacted with Ms. Khan, correct? That means you, I know you are not from the same constituency or GRC, but you would have occasion to meet at public events, uh, perhaps at party meetings, would you not? During this period of August to September, um, the only thing I can recall is that we probably had a Zoom meeting to discuss uh, some parliament, preparations for parliament. So uh, she attended, uh, and, and I mean, I didn't have any one-to-one -one interactions with her as such. Okay. Not that I recall, yeah. Okay. Now, again, in this period of time, did you discuss or consult with anyone in your party about Ms. Khan's lie and the steps to be taken? Besides, uh, I know you say you didn't speak to Mr. Singh and Mr. Faisal, but were there anyone else that you spoke to? No. 
Okay. Were you aware if anyone else were aware of Ms Khan's lie in Parliament? You mean among the MPs? Amongst the Workers' Party MPs. Uh, as far as I knew, only Pritam, Faisal and myself were aware. Okay. What about the broader Workers' Party membership? And, and I'll, oh, okay. Uh, I will give you some context. Mm. Ms Khan told us that she, has, she had confided in Mr Yudhishthira Nathan and Ms Lo Pei Ying. So at least those two who are cadre members of Workers' Party were aware. Now, from your perspective, I, I know you may or may not have known about that at that time, but to the best of your knowledge, in August and September, were there any other Workers' Party members who were aware that Ms Khan had spoken a lie in Parliament on the 3rd of August? Uh, from my understanding, I mean, uh, Yudish and uh, Pei Ying were told by her. Um, when she did that, I don't know, but uh, I, I mean, I, I believe they were aware. Okay. Were anyone else, to your knowledge, aware? I can't recall anyone uh, being aware. Okay, so it must therefore follow that you did not tell this to anyone else, period, right? Yes. Okay. August, September, right? Yes, August, September. Now, I'm now past the August, September period. Sure. So you told us that uh, on the 1st of October, there was an email that yeah. was sent by Mr. Singh. Okay, so we heard about that. Now, Mr. Singh also told us that subsequent to that email, on the 3rd of October, he went to Ms. Khan's home and had a discussion with her concerning the 4th of October parliamentary sitting. Were you aware of that at that time? I was aware of it the next day when uh, Pritam told me that he had gone to her house the night before or the day before. Okay, so you were not aware of it on the 3rd of October no. itself? Okay. On the 4th of October, when you became aware of it, can you tell us when you became aware? At which point of time on that day? I'm sorry, I really can't remember what time it was, but um, I remember Pritam telling me about the fact that he had gone to her home the day before. Um, quite likely, it would have been after the exchange with Minister, I think, but I can't recall uh, exactly. Okay. To give you some timeline, Parliament set at 11am on the 4th of October. First hour and a half were PQs. Right. And by 12.30, Minister Shanmugam has stood up to make a short Something ministerial like statement. Right. And it concerned this issue. Mm. That entire exchange took place over the next 12 to 13 minutes. And then the, the, the rest of parliamentary business continued. So as far as you remember, it was after this exchange, correct? Most likely. Most likely? Yeah. Okay. But not well, like immediately, you know, but sometime during the day. Okay. Were you present during the exchange? The yes, exchange? I was present. So you heard what she said? Yes, I did. Okay, first, so when, when she first stood up and explained and she had, you remember she was asked various questions and if you'd like to refresh yourself, there's a copy of the hands up somewhere around. I can remember. You do. Okay. Were you surprised at her res response? I wouldn't say surprised, but I, I was very frustrated at that point. Why were you frustrated? I was frustrated because uh, it didn't appear that there had been any progress made on moving towards uh, correcting the record. And in fact, uh, at that exchange or the clarifications, um, there was a doubling down on, on the untruth. Okay, earlier you told us that after the 8th of August meeting, thereafter there was no other communication, discussion whatsoever in August and September. And you had left it to Mr Singh and yes. also did not discuss with Mr Singh or with Mr Faisal. So the next point in time, in the timeline, that this issue confronted you after 8th of August was this occasion on the, part, on the 4th of October in yes. Parliament. And you said you were frustrated with Ms Khan's answers. I'm just trying to understand that because you would not have known by that time what Mr Singh had discussed or agreed with Ms Khan that she would do if this matter came up, correct? I mean, I didn't know, yes. Yes. So for all you know, this might have been an answer consistent with Mr Singh's directions. I would find that unbelievable. Fair enough. I mean, that, but you would not have prior knowledge of what the game plan would be, so to say. 
I will uh, not be able to believe that uh, Pritam had uh, asked her to lie or gave her a choice to lie. I mean, that, that was definitely not our understanding of what should be done. So uh, the fact that she then stood up and did continue to lie, and in fact more than once, uh, you said frustrated you, but would also have caused you some alarm, and I would suppose I would I would I would presume some degree of consternation as well. I mean, you are the party chairman. This exchange has just happened. It's exacerbated the lie that was first spoken, and now at least three senior members of the Workers' Party are present in Parliament whilst the lie was being spoken. So, what was your reaction, given what I've just described? What was your reaction in the immediate aftermath of? hearing this exchange with Minister Shanmugam? No, of course, um, when she basically doubled down on the untruths, uh, like I said, I was very frustrated because uh, the situation had been made worse in that sense. And um, I, um, after the exchange uh, was over, okay, I was actually thinking through of some of the, uh, what, 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 should be done next and with what urgency? Because to me, the matter had become more urgent now. Um, so I... I think uh, about an hour later or so, I I messaged Ms Khan because I was also concerned about uh, where she was, what she was doing and, and so on. So um, we agreed to meet, uh, I think at the LO's office, the Leader of Opposition's office, um, Sometime uh, in the afternoon. Okay. Just, thank you. Just so I get the timeline yeah. right, you messaged Ms Khan sometime in the afternoon, uh, shortly after. I think after it was she... about an hour after the exchange, something like that, yeah. Okay. Would this be before or after you spoke with Mr Singh? Because remember you told us that you before, spoke with Mr Singh. Before, I think. Before. Yeah. Okay. So, can you please pick up the... Submission by Ms. Khan to the COP, dated 7 December. Yeah. You have that? Yes. Okay, to give you uh, uh, some context. What, what page is that, sorry? 7, uh, you, ha you have the submission with you, 7 December. 7 the December. page number appears at the bottom. And I'm, I'm going to refer to page 8, but I wanted to tell you hey, what, this, okay. what okay. these documents are about, to give right, you some okay. orientation, because I think this is the first time you're seeing right, it. Right. In the course of testimony, various of the witnesses would offer additional documents, in sure, this sure. case, WhatsApp mm -hmm. messages. Mm. So this came from Ms. Khan, and she disclosed this to us. And okay. if you go to the top of page 8, yeah. you will see that's when uh, her messages starts with you at 1.57pm. Mm. You see that? It's from you. It says, Ray, where are you? Was looking for you. She didn't reply a minute later. Hey, Sylvia, I went to the women's room for a right. while. Yes, that's right. Are you still outside the chamber? Mm -hmm. And then you said, in library, want to meet at Elo's room? Yes, that would be great. I'll see you there. That's right. And then you said, okay. Yes. Now, that's the exchange you referred to, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you would have met her shortly after this exchange? Yeah, I think probably half an hour or an hour uh, after the, the last message. Okay. Would Mr. Singh have been aware of this meeting? I don't think so. So Because at that time, if I'm not wrong, the FICA debate was on. So he was quite involved in that. Okay. Uh, you were meeting in his room, which I yes. take, since you didn't ask him first, you can walk in at any time. <laughs> um, and it the... is sometimes locked, but I, I think in sit on sitting days, it's generally unlocked. Yeah. Okay. So can, when you met Ms. Khan there, around this time or shortly after this message. Can you describe the meeting? Yeah, okay. So f I, I had two purposes actually of um, wanting to meet her. Um, the first was also, of, of course, to see um, uh, emotionally how she was after the exchange uh, with Minister, which I think most people would find stressful in any event. Uh, so that was the first really? thing. Really, why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying most people. <laughs> Uh, so, so just to square that circle with her, and at the same time also, um, certain things which the minister had said in his speech uh, also made me uh, consider certain things which I think were important. All right. So, for example, he mentioned uh, in his speech that um, 
the police would be contacting Ms. Ms. Khan to find out more about the, um, the statement that she had made. And at that point in time, uh, what struck me was that, and these are, this is me thinking uh, myself, is that, um, well, MPs who make speeches in parliament, they have parliamentary privileges. And at the same time, if there's any issue with any speech that's made in parliament, parliament is the proper uh, body to handle it. So uh, I was uh, wanting to share those views with her. So I told her that, look, this is my view, um, that whatever is said by an MP in parliament, if there's any uh, issue with it, parliament is the proper place to handle it. I didn't think that the police, this was just me quickly thinking, I didn't think that um, in this case, although of course the police may want to know more about the nature of the complaint and things like that, but I didn't think that the police would be exercising powers as such because they were not really investigating a criminal offence at that time. So I told her that, um, please get your own legal advice on this. Uh, this is just my preliminary view that whatever uh, issues may arise uh, from an M what an MP says in Parliament, Parliament is the proper authority to handle it, and uh, please go and get your legal advice on this. Okay, so to, to unpack it a little, there are two broad reasons why I wanted to see her. The second one that you just articulated is uh, as a follow-through and to prepare for the eventual request from the police for an interview. And uh, for her, and uh, yes, yes, and also for her to be clear of um, the legal position as well. Okay. At that stage... Uh, did you already tell her to consult with lawyers? I think I heard you say so, but I just wanted to... I suggested clear. to her to get legal advice. Okay. Now, your first reason to see her was also to ascertain her emotional uh, circumstance at that point in time. Yes. What was your assessment? She seemed highly stressed. Uh, not, not in a good place. Did you ask her, why did you repeat the untruths? I didn't ask her that. Did you ask her... I mean, again, I'm asking you this question and let me give you the premise, okay? You had just... The last time you spoke to her was on the 8th of August on this issue. Yeah. And on your evidence, the last time you spoke to anyone on this issue was actually the 8th of August too, right? Um, 8th of August, yes. Yes, because I, I was quite careful in finding out what happened throughout August and then September... And then you told me that on the 3rd of October, you weren't aware at that time, right? So now we're on the 4th of October afternoon. So yeah. when you're seeing her, this would be the first occasion after the 8th of August that you'll be talking to anyone about this issue, right? Correct? Talking to someone, yes. Anyone, actually. I think so, yeah. Yes. So in your mind, this was something that Mr. Singh was managing, Yes. Right. And so, from that perspective, did you ask her, what did you discuss with Mr. Singh? How did you end up repeating the lie again a few times? I didn't talk to her about that, you know. No. Were you not concerned about that? Um, of course, uh, there would be concern, but at the same time, I mean, the fact is that I didn't, you know, shout at her to ask her why she lied again or or what Mr. Singh had told her, because never in my mind would uh, I expect that Mr. Singh will tell her to double down on the line. So that was not a consideration. Yes, no, fair enough, fair enough. But even taking that on board, not assuming that, assuming that Mr. Singh would not ask her to double down on the line, even taking that on board, you would be concerned to know how she has now come to, in fact, double down on the lie, actually, right? I suppose I would, yes. You would have, but you didn't ask her anything about that? I didn't ask her about it at that point, no. Okay. Did you ask her whether her family was already aware of the sexual assault issue? I did not ask her about that at that time. Okay. Again, I raise that because you said it was a necessary step for yes. it to be disclosed. Yes. And you would have been aware that the very next day was another parliamentary sitting. So did you entertain the prospect that given that she has now just repeated the lie, which of course has made the circumstance worse, would it have been an option for her to go to Parliament on the next day to clarify the lie? 
I think theoretically, yes, it's an option. But practically, I don't think it's an option. Why? Because uh, such, a, such a matter uh, where she has to come uh, to explain how she came to tell the untruth, and in her mind, she has to um, talk about her past experience, and also um, the fact that she repeated it on the 4th, uh, it would require careful... Um, structuring, I would say, her drafting, and to make sure that she's able to be uh, very emotionally uh, stable and comfortable with her statement of clarification. So um, if I can just talk about a, a reason why this, this would make sense. Uh, on the 3rd of August, you'll remember that that was the day when um, the speech was first made. Yes. And um, after the speech... I know that Pritam was basically um, chasing her to give uh, details of um, the incident and so on. And, um, and based on certain uh, information which she gave to him, which turned out to be un further untrue, um, I do not know whether he actually went he through did, those details he, he did, that, he that she doubled down on the and said that it was Badok Police Station and so on and so forth. Then... Um, there was a clarification uh, that she made that evening on the 3rd of uh, August. Uh, and I believe that Pritam did help her with that clarification. And it turned out to be actually a clarification which further told the lie, you see. So I would say that haste uh, in this circumstance, even on the 4th of o October, uh, is not wise. And we needed to do it uh, calmly and, um, and in that sense, um, with due uh, deliberation. Okay, but I mean, I can understand what you say about the 3rd of August because the clarification that Mr. Singh drafted, which uh, Ms. Khan then delivered subsequently in a later uh, part of the same proceeding, I can understand that that was on the same day. But when you say haste should not be the principal consideration, I mean, right now, we are about more than two months since the lie was spoken in Parliament. Would you not agree that in this context, and plus the added fact that the lie had just been repeated, double down as you say, actually haste would be important to come and explain that what was spoken in Parliament was a lie, there was no such incident, the police can stop looking, and sexual assault victims need not be concerned that this might be an issue that could be true and might affect the way in which they look at whether they are prepared to come forward to see the police in that well, context. Well, I mean, Mr Tong, the, the fact of the matter is that we we have this thing happening on the 4th of October and the sitting continued on the 5th. Yes. Yeah, and uh, based on the normal timetable, there would still be a further sitting in November. That's what we understand. So it's a question of judgment, all right? I mean, if you want to rush through a clarification on 5th October, it might be possible, but... We will need time to go and um, ascertain from her exactly what she wants to say and whether it can withstand scrutiny. So, it's a judgment. I understand. I, I understand all of what you said, but I'm adding to it the complexion of it being a lie that was now repeated, which I think right. as, as a senior politician you would appreciate actually makes the situation worse. No, of course. I mean, right. as I said earlier... Um, what happened on 4th October, of course, made the situation worse, yes. Yes, so in that context, number one, and number two, in a context that there is now out there continued to perpetrate a lie which adversely affects not just the integrity of parliamentary proceedings, but also the police and perhaps sexual assault victims as well. Well, Mr Tong, our chairman, I should say, um, as I said earlier, we appreciated the seriousness of the situation, uh, and of course, uh, the events that took place in Parliament on the 4th of October had, had worsened the situation. And in my mind, uh, it was urgent for us to uh, take the necessary steps to correct the record. But I did not think that 5th October was an option. Okay. So on the 4th of October, up till... As far as I can uh, recollect, based on what Mr. Faisal and Mr. Singh had said earlier, there were 
no attempts to inform the Workers' Party CEC of this matter until the 29th of October. Would I be right in those dates? Uh, yes, we had a meeting on the 29th of October because we called the CEC to prepare them uh, for the statement that she was going to make on the 1st of November. Okay. So it was the Friday before the November sitting. I understand. And that would be the first time the CEC became aware that there was a lie in Parliament and that Ms Khan would come to Parliament to clarify the lie, correct? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Now, um, Mr Singh gave evidence that later that evening, towards the end of the sitting, and I think you remember that sitting because... It went on till almost midnight or past midnight, uh, the 4th of October. At around 11.15pm, he gave evidence that there was a meeting which involved yourself, Ms Khan, again in the LO's office with Mr Singh as well. Do you remember that? I remember that, yes. Okay. Can you give us an account of that meeting? Um, I don't think the meeting lasted very long from what I recall because it was, I think at the end of the FICA, um, the, the FICA debate had ended. And it was about 11-something in the evening. Uh, and meanwhile, there was an adjournment motion on mental health going on. So, uh, so we went to the LO's office. And then um, all I remember uh, at that time was that um, it's very likely that Pritam probably asked her what, what she's going to do about this matter. And what I recall was her saying something to the effect that um, there is another path, honesty, that's what I recall her saying. And then uh, the meeting ended off by saying, okay, we'll talk about this. And then it was that was basically all I can remember about that, that meeting. Okay. Just to dial back a little bit, was she present already with Mr. Singh when you arrived there or was she the last to arrive? I cannot remember that. You, you can't remember? No. I asked that because I wanted to know whether there was an opportunity for yourself and Mr. Singh to speak without Ms. Khan being present. Was there? I don't think so. No. So you didn't discuss that separately with him? No. Throughout the rest of the day, and I know that the FICA debate was going on and Mr. Singh did say that he was his mind was focused on that, but was there any occasion between the time that Ms. Khan spoke the lie again in Parliament on the 4th of October and when you met with Mr. Singh at 11.15pm, did you exchange any messages? Did you speak to him via text or email in any way to ask him what had happened and, and to talk about what why Ms Khan had repeated the lie? I don't think there were any exchanges like that. No? Or during that day itself. Not, not at all? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, again, let me verbalise why I ask you this. Because in your mind, you felt that he was the best person to deal with the issue and handle the matter moving right. forward. Which, to you, must lead to, naturally, an honest clarification in Parliament. Yes. Right? But you had just witnessed a double down of the lie. Right. And in your mind, putting the two together, this has happened. It's made it worse. But I left it to Sekjen, Mr. Singh, to deal with the problem. Would, you, would not one of your first instincts be to ask him, what happened? How did we end up in this situation? Well, on that day itself, on the 4th of October, I did not um, ask him further about this matter because... He was very heavily involved in the FICA debate at that time, which was a very heated and acrimonious debate. And then we were, you know, tabling amendments and so on. So there were a lot of things going on at that time. So, I mean, like I said, I didn't think myself that 5th October would be an option to, to make a clarification. So we could always talk later. Okay. So just to be clear, apart from this short meeting at 11.15pm in the LO's office, you did not have any other discussion with Mr. Singh over... The, by this time, the repeat of the lie, correct? On the 4th itself? On the 4th itself? Mm, yeah, no. no. Did you have a discussion with anyone else, Mr Faisal, perhaps? Not on that day, I don't no. think so. Yeah. Okay, so now on the 4th meeting, Which uh, you 4th of October, 11.15pm meeting, oh, okay. you said Ms Khan came and said, and th these are the words that Mr Singh used to describe what Ms Khan said. She says, he said, she said, Perhaps there's another way, that is to tell the truth. You heard this statement as well, said by Ms Khan? Words to that effect. I mean, what I recall was, you know, like what I mentioned earlier, okay. yeah, that there is another path, honesty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what was your response to this statement that she made? Uh, 
I wasn't quite sure what to make of it because, you know, she had just chosen another path earlier in the day, you see. So I, I was just listening to her uttering that statement and I really didn't know what to make of it, really. If in your mind, which you, you explained very clearly earlier, I mean, there's only really one outcome, which is to clarify the lie. Right. It's a question of when. But now that was not done on earlier that day, would you not have said to her, what do you mean there's another path? There's only one path, which is to come and tell the truth. I didn't say anything because Pritam, I think, responded, you know, and what I recall him saying was something to the effect that haven't you chosen your path by what you said today? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And did Ms. Khan reply to that? I don't think she did. I don't recall any reply. Okay. So, besides this exchange on those words that she used, what else happened at this meeting? I don't recall that the meeting lasted long, as I said, because it was quite late in the evening. So we sort of ended off by knowing that we would have to meet again, you know, to take the thing forward, and, and that was about it. Okay. It wasn't very long, I don't think. Mr. Singh told us that he did not say to her at this meeting that she had to tell the truth or words to that effect. Would this also be your recollection, that this was not said? He, he, he probably said something to the effect that we'll, have to, we'll discuss this further, you know, after she said that there's another path, and then she said, we'll discuss this further, and then I think that was it. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Nothing else was said. I can't recall, yeah. Okay. Did either of you ask her if by that time her family members were aware of the sexual assault experience? Not at that meeting. No. Would it not have been something that you would want to find out? Again, of course. Yes, because the context was, you, in your mind, it was a necessary step. Yes. Right? So why, why not ask her directly since she's before you now? I didn't think of it at the time. Because if this step had not been crossed, i.e. Right. her family was not aware, then you can't come to Parliament to clarify, correct? Like I mentioned, I mean, the underst I mean, at the 4th of October meeting, uh, in, late in the evening, um, it was not a very long meeting, okay, uh, and near midnight. And, uh, you know, basically, uh, it was, I think, called to tell her that the matter had to be taken forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, that, that was the main purpose, I think, of the meeting. And it didn't last very long as well. But, but what does taken forward mean? Meaning, meaning that we would have to go to a parliamentary clarification. But those are not the words used with Ms. Khan. Uh, no, not at that meeting, yes. Okay, yeah. but, so on, at that meeting, how would she know that take it forward means to clarify the truth in parliament? Because Mr. Singh didn't say that. Mr. Singh didn't tell her to tell the truth in parliament. And... Uh, your last few words were also not articulated, in, at least in those terms, to Ms. Khan. And the only impression she is left with at that stage is, we'll have to speak further, and that was the end of the meeting. Well, um, earlier, as, I, uh, as you know, I met Ms. Khan uh, uh, in the afternoon, right? Yes. So, uh, as I said earlier, during that conversation which I had with her, I told her that uh, my initial view is that any issue with a speech made by an MP in Parliament should be clarified in Parliament because that's the proper uh, organ of state uh, to do it in. Um, so I had said th that to her, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, but which, which sitting, you see, it, as, as I tried to uh, I hopefully clearly articulate earlier, there was still the option of another sitting the next day. Right. And I, I know you explained why you felt it was too hasty, but was that something that was discussed? And if not, then why not? Because it could have been raised with Ms. Khan to say, look, your family is aware. If they are aware, let's start working on a statement. Because the longer this remains on the record, which I think you would appreciate, the worse it will be. No, of course. I mean, uh, we, want, we wanted the matter to be clarified sooner rather than later, especially after the 4th of October uh, exchange where the situation did get worse, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, at the meeting on the 4th of October, late at midnight, I mean, that was 
in my mind, anyway, 5th October was not an option for the reasons that I mentioned. But what I understood was that we would be moving quickly now to um, assist and guide her towards doing what was necessary to correct the record in Parliament. Okay. Ms. Khan gave evidence that uh, this meeting also discussed the possibility that there might be a Committee of Privileges hearing as a result of what had happened. Do you recall that? I can't distinctly recall. It may have happened, but I, I can't distinctly recall. Okay. So, after this short meeting, and you left, was there another occasion, either on the 4th itself, I know it's already very late at, at that time, or on the 5th at the next day in Parliament, where you had occasion to discuss with Mr Singh, what then would the next steps be? I cannot remember whether I discussed it with him or not on the 5th. I can't remember that. No. Do you, would you have exchanged messages with him? Text messages, emails? I doubt so. Because so I, I, I can't remember whether we discussed it on the 5th or not. Okay. I mean, again, in context, and to explain why I'm asking this question, you had just seen what happened on the 4th of October. You had spoken with Ms Khan twice. You had, in prior to that, thought Mr. Singh, in fact, assumed Mr. Singh would be doing it, dealing with the problem, but now the problem has been exacerbated. Why is it that on the 5th, there is no discussion with Mr. Singh on what the next steps ought to be? I think we left off on the 4th uh, on the understanding that we will be meeting again very soon. So uh, we, will, we will take those steps. You know? So on the 5th, I can't remember whether we discussed anything or not. I, I really can't. Because the problem was still sitting, I think, um, and I think I spoke on one of the bills, you know, so in that sense, I mean, there were other things going on here. Okay. Could you check the messages that you have and see whether in this period, on the 4th or the 5th, you have discussed it with Mr. Singh or indeed anyone else as to what next steps to take? 4th or 5th? Yes. I, I, I asked you to start from 4th because you had told me earlier that there's nothing prior to that that you discussed with anyone else at all. Yeah. Right. So on the 5th, did you speak to Ms. Khan at all again on this issue? I can't recall that. Because you were both in Parliament again. Yeah, but I can't recall whether I spoke to her or not. Can't recall. Okay. If you, if you did speak with her, you would probably recall. Am I right? Because... I, I suppose so, but you know, I, I'm not 100% sure. But I do recall speaking to her on the 4th. Okay, no, but on the 5th. Now in the aftermath of this, I mean, the... Again, the context is both yourself and Mr. Singh did say that Ms. Khan was distraught. She was affected by what had happened, which I think I can understand. But on the 5th, the next day, perhaps after you know, a night when things are calmer, would it not have been an occasion to, even if we've, you felt that it was too hasty to, to come clean on the 5th of October, would you not have wanted to discuss with Ms Khan what the next steps ought to be? As I said, I mean, the understanding that I had was that we will be meeting very soon to talk about this matter. So speaking on the 5th to me was, I mean, it, you know, it, it didn't matter one way or the other because it would be happening soon. Okay. Did you, on the 5th, have any sense as to when you'll be meeting? Was there a plan already? Uh, I think, let me try and remember now. I think a few days later we met. Okay, but as of the fifth, did you have, have had you already made plans to meet? There was no date fixed, I think. Okay, as of the fifth, can you tell me if there were any other steps taken as of the fifth which would be consistent with preparing for Miss Khan to come to Parliament to clarify the lie? I can't recall any steps because Parliament was sitting, so we were at the sitting, you know, doing our work. Okay. On the 7th of October, Ms Khan received an email from the police requesting for an interview and she forwarded it to you. Yes. Correct? She also sent, I think, subsequent to the 7th, also sent you a note from her lawyers which set out, I think, advice to her. Do you recall that? I recall reading that, yes. Yes. And in the email, which she sent to both yourself 
as well as Mr. In fact, to Mr. Singh and, and to Mr. Faisal as well. She asked you, what should she do? Or words to that effect. Do you recall that? Something to the effect, yes. Yes. How did you advise her? So, we, uh, the email came, as you mentioned, on the 7th of October. And we arranged um, for a meeting with Ms. Khan uh, on the 12th, the following Tuesday. So, we were... Uh, so, uh, maybe I'll talk about the police reply first before we talk about the actual sure. uh, other things, yeah. So, so um, at the 12th of October meeting... She, uh, okay, maybe to tell it more logically, I'll just describe the meeting as it went. So on the 12th of October, uh, this meeting took place in Pritam's house again. And uh, the meeting started off by um, Pritam saying, so have you decided what you're going to do about this? Sorry, to, sorry to interrupt, but can you give me a time roughly? What time was this at on the 12th of October? Um, Morning, afternoon, evening? I can't recall the time. I can't recall the time, but it wasn't in the evening. So sometime in the morning or afternoon? Something like that, yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. Please go on. Okay. So um, he started off the meeting, Pritam, by asking her, well, so what do you think, what are you going to do about this? And then she said, I still don't think I want to tell the truth. Okay, so at that point, um, I got angry, and uh, I think Pritam was also angry. And we... Um, told her that this correction has to be made, all right? And um, that, and we tried to persuade her by saying that, look, um, if you do not make the correction, this is going to weigh on you, you know, for the rest of your life, and it will be too much of a burden, you know, for for anyone to bear. You need to correct this. You know, so so that you know um, everyone is clear, and then you know we can move on from there. Okay. So okay, so then coming back to the police thing. Yes. So uh, so uh, around at the end of this meeting, um, I can't remember whether it was she who raised it or I who raised this this issue of the police request. And and then and this was after she agreed with us that she would be making a clarification in Parliament at the next sitting. So uh, I told her that that as far as the police request is concerned, I think it is okay for you to leave it because you're going to clarify the matter in Parliament, and in your clarification, you know, you're going to be retracting the anecdote anyway. So. Let's just do this in Parliament and, and, and leave the police reply. I think you can leave the re police reply. Okay. So, when you first met with her, together with Mr. Singh, yeah. on the 12th of October, she had expressed reluctance to speak the truth in Parliament and clarify the yes. last, right? This would have been completely against what you would have thought would have happened. Meaning, when you walked away on the 8th of August and again while you left the matter to Mr. Singh to deal with, in your mind it must have been, there's only one conclusion, which is she will come and clarify She's the truth. Clarify, right? yeah. So hearing from her, I mean, first of all, on the 4th, where she did not, not just, did she not clarify the lie, but she doubled down on it several times on the 4th, and now on the 12th, almost a week later, or more than a week later, she's still telling you that she's not prepared to tell the truth and clarify. You must have taken this to be a very direct affront to what you understood to be the correct path, the right thing to do. Isn't it? Yeah, it was not an option for her to continue the lie. And did you turn to Mr. Singh and say, what did you all discuss and agree? It didn't strike me that this would have been agreed between her and him to double down the lie. I mean, that would not so much double never down. cross my, my mind. I, I understand. But not so much double down the lie, but rather, you see, again, you know, understanding your evidence, your, your touch points were limited. 8th of August, there was one. Whole of August, whole of September, nothing else. 
3rd of October, you weren't aware at that point in time. You only knew on the 4th when you met with Mr. Singh and Ms. Khan at the meetings, right? And then you said 5th, nothing. And thereafter, you were aware of the police report on the 7th. But you didn't police respond. Request. Police Yes, so, I'm sorry. Police request on the 7th. And the next time you had to deal with this again is on the 12th of October. So that's your touch points to this matter. And your state of mind would have been, this is something Mr. Singh is handling. And it would be handled such that there really only can be one outcome, which is come and tell the truth. But here in front of you is an episode playing out where Ms. Khan had not told the truth on the 4th of October and is now coming to you again with Mr. Singh present and saying, I'm not going to come and clarify. So in this context, would you not have wanted to know what had been discussed, what had been agreed, what had gone on between Mr. Singh and Ms. Khan, which gave rise to this situation now? You see, it never crossed my mind, and, and I, I cannot fathom this possibility that um, Pritam would have given her uh, the option to choose between uh, telling the truth or continuing the lie. That never crossed my mind, and I do not believe it to be true. So when she comes and says, uh, I don't think I want to tell the truth, I think it's just her. It's nothing to do with Mr. Singh at all. Okay. Did you ask her if at that time... She, the, she had not yet told her family about it. I think it emerged during the meeting, but I don't recall. Did you ask who asked it? Whether me or Pritam? I can't recall that distinctly. Okay. But but we we I think um, concluded somehow that uh, she had not done that. Concluded somehow was that because you asked or? I can't, you see, I can't remember very clearly who asked this question, but it seemed like she hadn't closed the loop with her family yet. Okay. Exactly we, the words used or that, I'm, I'm sorry, I really can't recall that. That's fine. But again, going back to the context, you had said this was a necessary step. Yeah. So again, although, although the circumstances I appreciate are quite different, now in October, on October the 12th, and the, that day on 8th of August, it's quite different circumstances, which mm. I appreciate. But nonetheless, if your principal concern was her well-being and that this matter should not come to public domain without her family knowing, one of the key considerations still on the 12th of October would, would be whether her family was aware. Would you not agree? Well, that loop would definitely have to be closed. But I have to say that, of course, as time wore on and now it was already 12th of October, um, I was a bit impatient. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the thrust of what I was saying earlier when I asked you why you felt it was hasty on the 5th of October, because now the dynamics have changed, the circumstances have changed, Agreed. right? So it is a judgment as to when is the best and earliest possible time to do it. Uh, and, you know, it's a judgment as to which day is appropriate, 5th October or not 5th October, the next sitting. Okay, so as of 12th October, had you worked out whether her parents were aware? I concluded probably that she had sat on the matter, I think. So her family was not yet aware? That was my conclusion, yeah. Okay. So as of 12 October, despite the fact that the family being told was a necessary step, you all had insisted that she now has to come clean and she has got no choice but to do it at the next available sitting. Would that be right? Yes. So at least to that extent, there's a change in the circumstances on which she would now have to come clean. In the sense that, in the sense that uh, it was made clear to her that our view was that she needed to make a clarification uh, at the next available sitting, which was scheduled for 1st November. And to that extent, whatever needed to be done prior to that had to be done prior to that. Okay, so in other words, by this time, unlike in August, no ifs and no buts, it's just next, next sitting, you come clean, and by that time, we convinced her. Like, we convinced her of it. And uh, after some discussion, she agreed with us that uh, that was the best thing to do. Okay. So the upshot of that meeting on October the 12th was that she would come clean in Parliament and explain her lie at the next sitting, right? Oh, at least she would set the record straight uh, okay. in Parliament, yes. Okay. And as far as you are aware, and I think you will confirm this, that's the first time you were aware that she would come and make a statement to clarify the lie in Parliament, right? It is the first, I would say, express 
a confirmation that this would happen, that she would be making that statement in Parliament to correct the record. Yes. The because first express commitment, yes. To you, at least to you, right? Mm, yes. Okay. Because your previous experiences or touch points with this matter, as I said earlier in my timeline, were just on 8th of August and probably fleetingly on the 4th of October, correct? And, and, and at neither of those occasions was there a confirmation by her that she would come to Parliament to clarify the lie. The confirmation right? uh, was, ob was obtained uh, on the 12th of October, yes. And, and not prior to that? Uh, no, not expressly, no. Okay. And the other difference on the 12th of October is that this time, it was, as I understand your evidence, articulated clearly to her that she has to go to Parliament to tell the truth, correct? Yes, we articulated that to her. Yes, and that's the difference also between what happened on the 8th of August and again on the 4th of October, where the words for her, where the phrase for her to go to Parliament to tell the truth was not spoken to her, correct? On the 8th of August, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we did not touch on this, the, the steps to be taken in Parliament to rectify the record because of the immediacy of the other issues, um, her emotional state, the fact that her family didn't know and so on. Um, so it was not articulated at that time. Uh, on the 4th of October, as I mentioned earlier, I had a brief conversation with her in the afternoon to tell her that, uh, in my view at least, initial, my initial view is that uh, any issues with what an MP says in Parliament mm -hmm. should be resolved by Parliament, settled in Parliament. So that general statement I made to her. Okay. But on the 12th of October, we got her commitment to make the statement. The statement meaning to tell the truth. You expressed that to, to her. Yeah, to correct the record, yes. Okay. And uh, the difference being that on the 4th of October, your words, uh, and I appreciate what you've just said, did not include uh, an exhortation to her to tell the truth in Parliament, correct? But I think the general direction, I did articulate it. So I said to her that any issues uh, with what an MP says in Parliament should be clarified in Parliament. Parliament handles its own affairs. And, uh, and in that context, I asked her to get legal advice as well. Okay. So the turn of phrase that I suggested to you was not used, but in your mind, it was clear enough to her that that's what you meant. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying, I'm saying that what uh, I meant on the 4th of October in that conversation with her was to steer her to say, look, this matter has to be clarified in Parliament. So I put it in more general terms, but that was what I meant. Okay, all right. From the 12th of October uh, onwards, we see quite a number of steps being taken to prepare for Ms Khan to make a statement in Parliament. And you have been privy to some of these steps, and I'll just like to walk you through them. Okay? Sure. Now, on the 12th of October itself, I, pr I presume shortly after or sometime after the meeting that you've just described, there was a meeting that Mr. Singh had with Mr. Nathan and Ms. Lo. First of all, were you present at the meeting? I wasn't you present wasn't. at the meeting. Were you aware that there was such a meeting? I think I was told by um, Pritam about the meeting, but when, I can't remember. Okay, so sometime after the meeting took place? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Were you aware why he, he had a meeting with them? The impression I got was that they asked to see him. Mm -hmm. And eventually, since he was reporting to you after the meeting took place, did he tell you what it was about? I think he, he did, um, but I can't recall distinctly what he said. Okay. Can you give us a gist of what he said the meeting was about? I'm trying to recall whether I, I even... Because uh, I know that he did tell me that Paying and Yudish asked to see him. Uh, well, because they are the closest um, assistants in that sense to Ms. Khan. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that uh, it's in relation to um, what she was going to say in Parliament um, on the 1st of November. I believe so, but okay. but the details I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. Miss, from what I... I'll just summarise. From what we heard from Ms. Lowe and Mr. Mm. Nathan, they, were, they made the request to see the meeting. And the purpose of the meeting was because they had learned, I assume subsequent to the meeting that you had with Ms. Khan, that she was now going to make a clarificatory statement or, or statement to, to tell the truth, or clarify the lie. 
and they wanted to meet with Mr. Singh to work out the preparatory steps towards that. And in their minds, they were concerned with making sure that, for example, Ms. Khan's social media handles would be well taken care of, that should there be queries by constituents in Compassvale, that they would also have something to deal with, uh, and also to talk through the process of what might happen as a result of such a statement being made, which they appreciated would be big news in Parliament. Would that be something that would accord with your recollection of what happened at the meeting, based on what Mr. Singh told you? Well, I wasn't at the meeting, you know, but uh, based on the timeline, uh, I would say that what you've described to me would not be surprising that they would be discussing these things. Okay. Now, um, there, thereafter, and I mean from 12 October onwards, mm -hmm. okay, so just to give you a sense of the, the timeline I have in mind, 12 October was this meeting where you persuaded Ms. Khan to come clean. And then you mentioned earlier that there was a 29th of October meeting with the CEC, right? Okay, so yes. within this window, within this window, uh, would you agree that there were several drafts of the statement that were canvassed, looked at and edited? And you were involved in that, correct? I was present at uh, some of these meetings, uh, if not all. I can't remember how many there were. Uh, yes, there were drafts, different versions exchanged. Uh, during this period of time from the after the 12th mm -hmm. and before the 29th. Okay. From what I can piece together from the various WhatsApp messages that went on, and this is, of course, somewhat second-hand information, um, there were something like five or six drafts, and there were also about five or six meetings which took place, either at the UNOS Town Council office or at Mr. Singh's home, or at party headquarters. Would that accord broadly with your own recollection? I do not recall going to UNOS Town Council office uh, for any meeting, but uh, I attended a few at Pritam's house, and there was one at the Workers' Party headquarters, yes. Okay. So would it be fair to say that the draft was very carefully looked at by yourself, Mr. Singh, Ms. Khan, and I think in some cases, also, some of the drafts, also Mr... Nathan and Miss Lo. Yes, they were always, I mean, you know, her, her confidants, you know, and I think they were quite, um, how shall I say, quite into the contents of the statement that Miss uh, Khan would be giving. So they had their views and so on, but in the end, I, I think it was dra the drafts were all drafted by her. Okay. Yeah. So my, my question was a bit broader than that. It covers yourself and Mr. Singh. So let's focus on two of you in particular. Okay. The, the, the various turn of the drafts would include comments that you make and edits that you suggest, correct? We tried to be um, judicious about that because it's going to be her speech her and it's going to uh, be something that's very uh, highly personal that she's, she wanted to share in the public domain. Yes. So we didn't really want to curtail in that sense the way she wanted to tell the story. Of course. Yeah. So, I mean, content... But we did give comments, yes. Yes, content and the truth and falsity of the statements, she has to take ownership of it. But I suppose Mr. Singh and yourself would also be looking out at the draft from uh, pers the perspective of the Workers' Party as a party, the impact that this will have, because as we said earlier, or as I said earlier, this is a high signature move. There will be, and you expected there to be some significant adverse publicity. So you would be and keen to ensure that at least to those extents you give your input, correct? I would say that what was in my mind at the time looking at drafts was that it was my feeling that one or two of the drafts were placing too much uh, emphasis on the past experience that she had. And uh, the apology and the retraction for the untruth in in one or two of the drafts was not very clear. So that was my focus that, look, you want to make a clarification in Parliament uh, to, to apologise and retract an untruth, you have to say it clearly. Mm -hmm. So that was that was it. And I didn't think that um, an overemphasis on the past, uh, sexual trauma and so on, uh, would uh, be helpful in that sense because it might be read the wrong way. Okay. So, 
Would it be fair to say that by the time you arrange for a CC meeting on the 29th of October, you, you would have been satisfied with the way the draft looked like? I can't say for sure, you know, because uh, the drafts were still being, you know, looked at and, and amended and, 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 you know, Yudish and Bing were also looking into it. So I, I can't be very sure about that. But, you but, were... but she came with the draft and, and uh, we all looked at the draft at the meeting. Okay. And so if there were any final views that you had, comments, you would have given it to her at that meeting? Yes. Right. Now, early on, we agreed that this was the first time the CEC was aware of this incident and aware of the lie in Parliament and also aware of the fact that she will then be, in a few days' time, going to Parliament to clarify it, correct? On the 29th of October, that's when the CEC uh, was informed that she would be making this clarification on the first, yes. Okay. Now, can you describe the CEC's reaction to being told about this? First of all, was the entire CEC present at this meeting? Uh, I think some people could not make it for the meeting. Okay. Do you remember who? Um, I think Ting Ru was not there. Mm -hmm. um, Louis Chua, I think, also could not make it. And... Uh, let me see... One or two others. Okay. So can you give us a broad description, the gist of the meeting with the CAC? Okay. So uh, Raisa addressed the CC and told them uh, that she was going to, uh, that she had, uh, she was going to make a statement of clarification in Parliament on the 1st of November. And she uh, explained briefly that. Um, she felt very strongly about this issue of um, victims of sexual assault, and uh, she was a victim herself prior to that, you know. And then um, she she was telling them that uh, she's she's trying to work on herself, you know. Uh, and then I think that the the draft was circulated or, or at least read out, and with a few copies uh, circulated as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, were there comments made by the CEC to this draft? Uh there were some, but I can't really distinctly recall. Uh, there was one query about uh, whether it was necessary to bring up her past. Yeah, so okay. that, that was what that was discussed. Yeah. Did anyone else address the CEC? Did Sorry? you? Did anyone else address the CEC? Address the I think Pritam did. What did he say to the CEC? I think he gave the background why this statement is coming to be made. Yeah. Okay, and can you give us the gist of that background? To um, the best of your recollection. It was, it was just a, an explanation that, you know, on the 3rd of August... Uh, okay, I, I'm actually not very sure now whether she gave the background or him. I can't remember. But anyway, the CC needed context. So it was explained to them that there was a, a speech made in Parliament on the 3rd of August by her, mm -hmm. that it contained something that is not true, mm -hmm. and uh, that... Uh, she would be making a statement uh, to, to correct it, you know, and, and she was and she explained the circumstances of, of, of that. Okay. I mean, this is just a, a, a broad picture thing because I can't recall distinctly who said what, you know. Okay. The purpose of this meeting, uh, Ms. Lim, on the 29th of October would be to apprise the CEC ahead of time that this statement would be made in Parliament by a Workers' Party MP, correct? We wanted the CEC to know... Uh, first, before it became public, yes. Yes, in fact, I mean, that's, I would say, good order, but only correct for the CEC, which is the highest body in your, in, your, in your political party, to be aware of it before it becomes public, correct? That was, that was why we called the meeting. Right. Now, at this meeting, was the CEC aware that Ms Khan had already informed you, Mr Singh and Mr Faisal, about the lie on the 8th of August? I think that topic was not specifically discussed at the meeting on the on the 29th of October. Yes, but my question is a different one. Was the CEC aware at this meeting or any time prior to that that Ms Khan had already informed you, Mr Singh and Mr Faisal, about the lie on the 8th of August? The date of 8th of August was not mentioned, but I believe that they it would have stood to logic that 
if we are calling the CEC meeting for this, that we would have known about it earlier. Exactly when, I don't think they knew. So it's possible that they would have been aware or they would have thought that you would have been aware shortly before the meeting was called? I, I don't know what they thought, but it's possible. Yes. So the fact that you, uh, the three members of the Workers' Party, and I think uh, for short, I'll just say the senior leadership, referring to yourself, Mr. Singh and Mr. Faisal, the fact that the senior leadership were aware a few of the lie a few days after it was told in Parliament by Ms. Khan was not something that, as far as you know, the CEC was aware of on the 29th of October, correct? I cannot recall what they knew, um, but at the meeting on the 29th of October, the date of uh, 8 August was not mentioned. Okay, so certainly as far as speaking for yourself, you did not tell anyone on the CEC that you were aware of the lie on the 8th of August, correct? At the meeting itself? At the meeting or anywhere else? Uh, I did not say <laughs> yeah, when I knew. Okay, all right, thank you. Now, the statement was then made in Parliament on the 1st of November, the following Monday, I think it was, right? And on Tuesday, the 2nd of November, the Workers' Party CEC set up a disciplinary panel, correct? Yes. As of the date on which the DP, again, I'll call it the DP for short, was set up by the CEC, the CEC was also not aware at that time that the senior leadership of the Workers' Party had already been aware of the falsehood by the 8th of August, correct? Uh, the CEC, I think they, uh, the members were not aware of when we came to the knowledge. Yeah, so 8th of August, I think they, they may not have known. Okay. Sorry, Chairman is asking whether I want to take a break. No, I know. <laughs> well, maybe I'll ask you, Ms. Lim. Would you like to take a break, uh, Ms. Lim? Well, it um, depends on how long more we I, I think I'll be about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I don't know about my colleagues. So I'm in your hands. If you'd like to take a break. Why not we? Why not you carry on with the 10 to 15 minutes and then we take a short break then? Is that okay, Ms. Lim? I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Just check where I was. Uh, disciplinary panel. Yes, and I think you said the CEC was not aware when we, when we came, so 8 August, I think they may not have known. Okay. Now, um, amongst the steps taken by the DP, of which you were a member, yes. was an invitation to Workers' Party members to make submissions and to offer their views to the DP on this matter, correct? The matter mean, meaning the lie in Parliament by Ms. Khan. Yeah, we saw their views. Yes. It's, just, it's just part of also in, including party members in this process. Yes, I understand. But in that context, would you not agree that the fact that Ms. Khan had told the senior leadership of the Workers' Party about the lie as early as the 8th of August, which is about almost three months prior to the setup of the DP, would that fact not be relevant to be disclosed to members of the Workers' Party? who are being invited to offer their views? I didn't see the relevance of that, actually. Because, I mean, as, you know, as a lawyer, both of us are lawyers, we, we would appreciate that one of the usual mitigating circumstances that come up would be the extent to which, how early, and whether an accused person admits to guilt. Correct? Yeah, but I mean, if you look at the... Um letter that we wrote to Ms. Khan about the, uh, the proceedings that we were uh, engaging in, uh, and I believe that you probably have seen the yes. letter. Um, I sent it to her, I think, on the 2nd of uh, November. May I have it as well? I've, it, is in the pal it is in the records there, but I forget the COP reference number. Can you help me as well? I think it's in one of Ms. Khan's submissions, if I remember. Ms. Khan's 2nd December, is it? Yes. Ms. Lim, do you have it? Uh, yes, I have my, okay. my, yes. my email so, to her. So you're referring to that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, I wrote to her on the 2nd of November uh, to inform her um, of the uh, disciplinary panel, I mean formally to inform her of the disciplinary panel set up and what we were looking into. Uh, and, it, and it was explained to her, I don't know whether you all have the email. Yes, I have the email. Okay. Yeah, so it was explained to her that, um, that what, what we were inquiring into were the untruths. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the untruths told on 3rd August and also the fact that she repeated the claim on, on 4th October. Okay, so, so it, that, that was it. We were inquiring into the untruths told by her in Parliament on the 3rd of October and on the 4th of, uh, sorry, 3rd of August and the 4th of October, which she subsequently, you know, uh, clarified on the 1st of November. We told her that, that this is what the committee is looking into. And at the same time, um, this is actually constituted under Article 20 of the, our party constitution, which is the article which allows the party CEC mm -hmm. uh, to take action against members who have acted uh, contrary to the principles of the party or prejudicial to the welfare of the party. So she was put on notice that this was uh, a proceeding that may lead to disciplinary action in accordance with that particular article, yes. right? So um, she was invited to provide her explanation and writing as to why this incident happened, you know, uh, and if there is any supporting evidence to corroborate what she said on the 1st of November, which was the clarification statement, mm -hmm. uh, then she should provide them. Okay. So, so the... The DP was looking into the untruths, and that's it. Okay. The, the point I'm making is I, I appreciate the, the email that was sent to Ms. Khan, and I think she would have understood it in the way that you've just outlined. But this is to Ms. Khan directly. Yes. The question I had was somewhat different. You were also on, and, I, and we heard evidence that on the 10th of November, uh, a, a WhatsApp or a text message blast was sent to all members of the Workers' Party, inviting them to make comments and offer their views. And the views, as I said earlier, included what the appropriate sanction would be for the DP to consider recommending to the CEC. A I range say, of... Yeah, I would say on, it's... Let, let yeah, me finish okay. this. A range of whether she should be expelled or whether she, whether she should be retained as an MP. So it is in this context that I'm saying that the information about Ms. Khan's coming to the senior leadership of the Workers' Party to admit her guilt and to say that this was a lie and a falsehood in Parliament, would that not be relevant to the gravamen and level of culpability of her conduct? And, and I'm putting to you that in this context, it is relevant because you are asking members to make a recommendation to you as a DP for you to decide what to do with her, what punishment is appropriate for her. But uh, you know, so the, it's in that context. Uh, okay, so so as I mentioned, the DP was focusing on looking at the untruths that were mm -hmm. told. Why did they? Why were the untruths told? And why is it that you know it was repeated and and in the end clarified on first November? Mm -hmm. So this was what the DP was looking at. Our our SMS blast to the members was. It, Basically, a feedback gathering exercise. I mean, look, we are not bound by what the members uh, um, tell us. And the members, in the main, their focus was whether it's okay for an MP to lie in Parliament or not. I mean, that, that was the focus of their feedback to us. I know, but they also gave you a recommendation as to whether they felt you should expel her or retain her, correct? I mean, we, we took that on board, but, uh, you know, as I said, the C, in any case, the DP is not the decision-making body. I know. You know, the DP recommends to the CC, and the CC can decide otherwise as well, you know, contrary to what the DP recommends. I understand. Yes. I, I understand. But, well, two points. First, on the side of the members, them not knowing that Ms. Khan had in fact told the senior leadership of the Workers' Party about the lie very early on, that would have an impact on whether they assess her to be more culpable or less culpable, right? And hence, leading to your view as whether they should, they think the DP should expel her or retain her as an MP. Would that not be a fair assumption? I think that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we were focused, uh, as in our letter to her, we were focused on the fact of how the untruth came to be told in Parliament in the first place mm -hmm. and the fact that she had repeated it um, two months later and, you know, and, and clarified it subsequently that it was untrue. Okay. So that was our focus. And, our, I mean, our uh, SMS to the members was basically to get their sense of what is expected, what do they think is expected of a, a Workers' Party MP. I mean, that, that was the gist of it. 
And as I mentioned, uh, we will still need to make our own uh, recommendations to the CEC, and the CEC could decide one way or the other. They don't have to accept our recommendations. Yes, but at this point in time, that means by the time you made the recommendations eventually to the CEC, right. which I believe was on the 30th of November, yes. correct? At, as of this date, the CEC was also not aware that Ms Khan had come to the senior leadership of the Workers' Party by the 8th of August to say that, to explain that she had told a lie in Parliament, correct? If I recall the CEC meeting correctly, um, Pritam did address the CEC and inform them that we had known for some time. But I, I cannot recall distinctly the words that he used, but it was told to the CEC at the meeting. I see. Well, that's a little different from what Mr. Singh uh, told us. I see. And also a bit different from what Mr. Faisal told us. But we'll, we'll leave it. I mean, I think it's perhaps uh, we'll compare the evidence. Yeah. But the point is, at the time, the CEC appointed the three of you as members of the DP, which I think was done on the 2nd of November itself, just before you sent out a press release, I believe. 2nd November, stage, yes. yes. At that stage, certainly, the CEC was not aware that the three of you were already privy to the information from Ms Khan from as early as 8th of August, correct? I believe the CEC was not aware. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So, in this case... Would you not agree that the people on the DP are or include the very people whom Ms Khan has said to her she should continue the lie that she started in August in Parliament? I beg your pardon again? Yes, let me, see, let me repeat the question. I, this, I said that in this case, would you not agree that the people on the DP include the very people whom Ms Khan had said said to her, should continue the lie that she started in August in Parliament. You mean the, the evidence she gave before the COP, you mean? Both the evidence that she gave before the COP, as well as in other occasions in which she said that uh, she was told to continue the lie. I mean, we never said any such thing to her, so I, I don't accept the premise of your question. Okay, but you would agree that if she is right, then the DP will comprise people who she says told her to continue to lie. That's a hypothetical. I, I, I don't agree with You're that. You're not answering that. Now, I asked you earlier whether you were aware of what Pritam, or what Mr. Singh had been doing. And I think your evidence was you left it to him. You didn't know what steps he was taking with her. August, September. August, September, culminating in the October period. Yeah. Right? And your first, your first, the first time back discussing this issue with anybody was after she made the speech on the 4th of October, Correct. First time that I spoke to anyone. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yes, okay. Now, so, you would therefore not be aware of what Mr. Singh told her precisely to do or not to do, correct? I was not present. No. Yes, and so you were therefore not aware of what Mr. Singh might have told her directly or indirectly, correct? Uh, you mean, what, on 3rd October or, or, or when? You would not have been aware as of the 4th of October what Mr. Singh was saying to Ms. Khan prior to the 4th of October, correct? Including 3rd October or, or what? Let me, let me perhaps explain this and break it down for you. You said earlier that you spoke to no one about the lie or falsehood, spoke to no one verbally, in writing, anything, throughout August and September, right? Yes, I believe I said okay. that, yeah. And you also told us that the 3rd October meeting, you didn't know on the 3rd of October. Yeah. The first time you came into contact with any issue concerning the lie was in Parliament itself on the 4th of October when you heard her repeat the lie, right? Yes. Okay. And thereafter, you had a conversation with Ms. Khan at around 2 p.m. and or later 3 p.m., yeah. Uh, 3 p.m. And later that day with Mr. Singh at about 11.15 p.m., right? We spoke on the 4th of October, yes. Okay. So at no time prior to her making the speech on the 4th of October, would you have been aware of what guidance Mr. Singh gave to Ms. Khan, what he said to Ms. Khan, what he may not have said to Ms. Khan, correct? I was, not, I was not present uh, yeah, at, at those, whatever he discussed with her, yes. Right. So it stands to reason that you wouldn't have known what he may have discussed with her. I can't attest to it in that sense. 
Yes, and I heard you say earlier that you would not even fathom that he told her to lie. Yes. Yes, I, and I heard your evidence clearly on this. But the point I'm making to you is that actually you would not be aware of what Mr. Singh may have said or may not have said to Ms. Khan. And given her evidence and given what she's now saying, at least to the COP, and I don't know if she, was, she had made this point to you earlier, but at least to the COP, would you not agree that the DP, all the more so, should not be in a position to discuss or to decide on these very issues? Because she is suggesting, at least now, that at least one or more members of the DP had told her to continue with the lie in, that she started in August. Would as far agree? as I know... Um she had first never. Sorry, she had never. No, sorry, I, I think it's important to my, explain this. Wait, do you understand my question, Chairman? Do you understand my question? Uh, it's very long. Okay, okay. but I. I'm but, happy to. I just want to make sure you understand, and then you please explain. No, you, so, so, so as as far as I know, she had never asserted that we had told her to maintain the lie, or anyone had told her to maintain the lie, right up to um, the conclusion of the DP um, proceedings. So, I mean, in that sense, I, I, I can't answer your question because it, it assumes something that, that I don't think is correct. Okay. So, now that you know that that's what she has said under oath... I mean, belatedly, right, I, yes, I suppose. Fair yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if she said it earlier, but I, I know that she did say it to the COP. Now that you know this, would you accept that this, if she is right, this might mean that this deep, the members of the DP should not be deciding and judging whether or not she was acting consistently with what she was advised to do, allegedly by senior leadership of the Workers' Party, or whether she was working on her own. Would you agree? Chairman, I, I, I think this question is not right because it's a hypothetical. And uh, all this <coughs> while, that we had no knowledge that she was going to make this allegation against any member of the DP. So, so it's the, a hypothetical, which I think is not right for me to so answer. The point, the point that you're making, I understand, that you were not aware of this until, I guess, what has been presented to the COP. But for she the never COP, raised this in any of her submissions, nothing. I understand. So from the COP's perspective, we're trying to determine what exactly happened. Right. So we have a version that's been shared by Ms. Khan mm -hmm. at the COP which uh, stated that she was told to continue on with the lie, which you disagree, and with the other members uh, have disagreed. So that's one perspective. The other perspective is the one that you've shared, that no such uh, directions were given. So we are trying to ascertain as to how these two possible lines develop and all the associated activities. So then what Mr. Tong is asking is that, with regards to the composition of the disciplinary panel, is that, if this version, as Ms. Khan has shared, that she was told to continue the lie uh, by one or more of the members who now comprise a disciplinary panel, now with knowing this as a possible um, scenario, would you agree that there is a conflict, that the same three person would be on the disciplinary panel? I know that you disagree with that being the truth, but if that allegation is valid, would that also suggest, therefore, the composition of the discipline panel, uh, there's an issue with that? So, Chairman, I still feel that this is a hypothetical put to me. So, so because, given because that... Because it was never raised. You know, it was never raised to yeah, you. No, yeah, I and I, I don't recall So, we're not asking any, in... Yeah, you know, so, so but we're asking as... You, we're asking as of now, as one of the allegations made, would it be fair to say that, that there would be an issue with the composition of the discipline, pa if discipline the panel? Had, if, if the, indeed what she claimed was true... Would that be an issue? If the if she had raised this matter earlier, then perhaps the composition could be different. But this is never the case, and uh, it's a belated allegation. So I we don't see any issue with the composition of the disciplinary panel at the point in time. In hindsight, now looking that if indeed that allegation was true, would that be an issue with the composition of the panel? If Chairman, it's still a hypothetical. I mean, I'm asked to assume something that. I you understand. Know, yeah, I understand. Not, so I don't think it, I want to answer because from your perspective, this uh, allegation that Ms. Khan has made is not true. Yes. Right. So, but what if? And we are trying to determine who is telling the truth. Right. Which line makes sense? So one perspective is that this lie, um, she was told to carry on with this lie. From your perspective, that was not said at all. No. 
So we have to determine the series of events that flowed from that and what seems to make sense. So if indeed that what she said was true, if indeed, uh, let's suppose if that's true, then would that therefore mean that the composition of the disciplinary panel, there's an issue with that? Which is really the question. I think if she had raised this issue earlier on, we may have dealt with it at that point in time. But the fact is that we did not see any such issue and that issue was never raised. I understand. So, you know, that's how so that's, this event that's a version. Yes. But what I'm saying is that if she had been told that and she had continued along those that position, then would the same composition of the discipline panel be an issue? If, if that, assuming that is true. Chairman, if at any time she had taken objection to the composition of the disciplinary panel, the CEC would have to assess the nature of the complaint and whether there was any reason to change the composition. So but that's, the fact that, is that this was never an issue. So this is not the question at hand. The question is... But I think it's not right for me to answer this question because, so, you know, then... So the, the question is, do you think or would you... is an issue, if indeed what she claimed is true? If she had raised it earlier, the CC would have looked at it. That's my answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll, I'll I'll leave that point and maybe make it put another put it another way to you. Regardless of whether Ms. Khan is right in making the point that one or more of the members of the DP had told her to continue with the lie, would you not agree that the Broader issue, the larger issue is that all of you on the DP, the senior leadership, knew about Ms. Khan's lie in Parliament some three months before it came out in the open on the 1st of November. Would you not agree that the CEC, the members of the Workers' Party, and the public would be entitled to know this so that they can come, in, come to a fully informed, unbiased view, particularly of the membership of the Workers' Party, as well as the CEC, who are involved in several decision points in this process? I think the consideration of the CEC at that point in time uh, about the composition of the disciplinary panel, uh, and I speak for myself, but I believe I'm not alone in this, is that, first of all, uh, this issue concerns a sitting MP, all right? Uh, and secondly, uh, because it concerns a sitting MP, it makes sense for the most senior officials to be the ones uh, in the disciplinary panel to make uh, appropriate recommendations to the CEC on what to do. So the choice of SG uh, chair and vice chair, it was proposed by SG and all of us did not see any issue with it because it just stood to reason that the most senior people needed to look into this matter. And it didn't occur to you or cross your mind that it would be relevant to disclose the fact that even if you're the most senior and most appropriate, which I've, I mean, on that score, I have no reason to, to disagree. But these are the same people who knew of the matter some three months prior to it coming out in open in Parliament. Would you not think that that's a relevant fact to disclose to the public, to members of the Workers' Party, and indeed to the CEC? That was not the primary consideration on our minds at the time. Okay. Now, um, I'd like to show you the WhatsApp message that Ms. Khan had sent after the 8th of August meeting. You, August. you may already be aware of what, what it says, but I'd like to show it to you. Mm -hmm. It's found in Ms. Lowe's submission on the 2nd of December. Okay. It's a series of screenshots, Ms. Lim. So if you can please turn to the second page of this bundle. On the bottom of that page, you see bottom. a screenshot yes. which is titled 8th of August, yes. right? Okay. So... This, these words were put in by Ms. Lo. 8 August, mm -hmm. Raisha Khan updates that mm -hmm. she told a few party leaders. Okay, I'll, I'll read this message to you. Right. It's from Raisha Khan, dated 8 August. The time is 12.41pm. And for context, this is sent on a group chat where the other members of the group would be Mr. Nathan and Ms. Lo. Okay. Right. She says, Hey guys, I just met with Pritam, Sylvia and Faisal and we spoke about the Muslim issues and the police accusation. I told them what I told you guys and they've agreed that the best thing to do is to take the information to the grave. They also suggested that I write a statement to send out this evening. Now, can I get your reaction to this statement? I know you didn't see it at the material time and certainly not at the time it was sent contemporaneously. But now that you've seen it, this is a message that was sent by Ms. Khan shortly after she finished the meeting with you 
and Mr. Singh and Mr. Faisal on the 8th of August. Can you give me a reaction to the contents of this message? I am not sure what she's referring to. Uh, when she says they've agreed that the best thing to do is to take the information to the grave. Okay. She gave evidence that this means that the lie that she told in Parliament on the 3rd of August, the consensus between the three of you at the meeting of the 8th of August was that if she was not to be pressed on this matter again, in other words, if this matter didn't come up again, then the best thing to do is to continue with the narrative that she told in August, which means to continue with the lie. That's not true. That's the evidence that she gave. That's not true. Okay. It's not true because on your account, there was, a, there was a confession by her on the 8th of August and there was no uh, response from the three of you. We did not talk about um, the next steps, yes. yes. So your, your position is that this is not true because you simply did not address the next steps at all, correct? Nothing was, was told to her to suppress anything. I mean, it's, it's not correct. Well, there was also nothing told to her to come to Parliament to clarify the truth, right? Uh, on the 8th of August, as I mentioned earlier, because of her emotional condition and the fact that, you know, she had kept her past um, away from her parents, those were the immediate things that we were addressing. Okay. So, I understand. Uh, the, the reason I'm asking these questions, and I, I also put some, what you call hypothetical to you earlier, is, is really because of this, and I wanted to explain this to you. Ms. Khan has come and give, given evidence that she's close to Mr. Nathan and Ms. Lo. And in fact, as I showed you, they have a group chat amongst each other. They talk about the events pertaining to the falsehood in Parliament a lot. And both, all three of them have come to this committee to give evidence. And from what we see of the group chat that they have, what they discuss with, with each other, what they tell each other, corroborate contemporaneously occurring events. Sometimes it also corroborates events that you are involved in. So, for example, on the 25th of November, Mr. Nathan and Ms. Lowe came before the DP, of which you are a member, to make certain submissions to you, including why, why don't you tell the public the timeline, who was involved, and so on. So it, there's a corroborative element to the messages that we are seeing. And I'm sharing this with you because I want to get your, your reaction to this. On the other hand, on the side of the senior leadership of the Workers' Party, there is no communication, in writing at least, with Ms. Khan. That is... Well, I understand that, and I also understand why on the 8th of August you refrain from addressing the issue head-on with Ms. Khan. What I also want to understand is why it is that even internally, between the three of you, there's also not one message or one email or something in writing which speaks to what the three of you would want to do or have decided to do to address the problem. You, you understand where I'm getting to? And I'm trying to understand why that is so and whether or not you're able to offer us some explanation as to why there was no internal discussion between the three most senior leaders of the Workers' Party. And I say that because I understand your evidence and that of Mr. Faisal and Mr. Singh about the sensitivity with Ms. Khan, about taking into account her well-being, all of which I think are good and I understand. But the question is, in private, between the three of you, where the emotional st questions don't exist, why is it that there's no discussion between the three of you that speaks to what you plan to do, what you want to do, and what you intend for Ms. Khan to do, which is to speak the truth? So I think we went through the earlier timelines, right? Um, for myself, uh, I became much more involved in the month of October. And, uh, and during that period of time, it was a stage when we were organizing in-person meetings to discuss this matter and decide what to do. So that was how we communicated. So there's, uh, I mean, we, we went through this, I, I know, but I'm asking you why. Why is there no correspondence between the three of you in writing that discusses your plans, when this might come up, maybe have some contingency, or maybe Mr. Singh updating you on when he's spoken with the family or when the family's aware, and what might clear the decks for Parliament to then be told about the lie. I'm just trying to understand why there isn't that contemporaneous 
internal correspondence between the three of you who are the senior leaders and who were aware of the lie from the 8th of August? Well, I think during the month of uh, August, I mean, this is when the um, the speech was made and uh, uh, subsequently what was told to us on the 8th. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we go into the month of, of September where, where um, Raisa is not well. So uh, as I said at that time, I left it to Mr. Singh to manage for the reasons which I described earlier. And therefore, you know, um, it was just left in, in that way, you know, and I didn't uh, speak to him very much about this matter until October came along. Okay, all right. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I've got no further questions. Uh, we, will, we will take a break, but may just a quick check for members. Any of you would like to ask questions? Long, short? M may I also, Done. May I also uh, Slim? produce some documents to the committee after the break? Yes, you may. Yes, okay. you may. Um, perhaps so. Let's take a break now. Uh, shall we adjourn? And now it's 2.35. And let's come back at... Uh, Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Can I just ask Ms. Lim one question? Yes, please. Because I, she's, you said that there were some documents you want to produce. Do they relate to the points we have just covered? Uh, it's more to do with the DP, actually. The DP? Yeah, because okay. I believe that the committee was interested to know about the work of the DP. Yes. Uh, and from what I uh, understood, uh, there were some um, suggestions that the DP was not doing the work that it was supposed to be doing. So it's in relation to that. Ah, okay. The, uh, I mean, I, I know what you're talking about. There were some messages that were being sent uh, by Ms. Khan, uh, in the close group with Ms. Khan and Ms. Lowe and Mr. Narvan, where they were recounting what she was asked. And the suggestion there in that group was that they, she was being asked questions which exceeded or did not fall within the scope of looking Something into the like falsehood. That, yes. So is it that that you're referring to? Uh, not just that. Okay. So maybe you make those available to us so that we can decide whether... Uh, we can ask. So perhaps I can do that after the break because I feel it's important for me to explain the context of the documents. Okay, okay we can do that. Okay, you can get the staff to make copies of it to distribute out later after the break. Uh, we will adjourn to 2.50. We take a short break. 2.55. Uh, uh, why don't we just round it up 3, 3 p.m. So you can have your lunch and do a bio break. I think we all need that. Thank you very much. Right. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Lim. Thank you. 